At a mile and three eighths, the egg shaped Darlington Raceway, NASCAR's first super speedway, opened in 1950. And here's how we'll cover today's race. Regan Smith is at Darlington along with director Artie Kempner, technical director John Howard, an abbreviated TV compound, and our Fox cameraman. In Charlotte, producer Barry Landis, hit producer Pam Miller, AD Eric Mandia, and of course, the booth talent. And out at Fox Network Center, Los Angeles, replay, graphics, commercials, Foxbox, and everything else that integrates into our telecast. Great effort, great expense, and we lovingly do it all for you to bring NASCAR to your home for the first time in 71 days. Now, Larry McReynolds, we're not the only ones working remotely today. Well, Mike, I'm pretty jealous. I didn't have this type of a resource to work with all my years as a crew chief. What you're looking at right here is the team engineer room at Hendrick Motorsports. Now, normally there's a multitude of engineers in this room, but they too are social distancing. What this engineer will do throughout the race is monitor what the competition is doing, monitor things about that 48 car, and help coordinate different strategies. He will be in constant communication with the crew chief, Cliff, Cliff Daniels. Now, this is not new to NASCAR. This has been going on for years. And what you can kind of relate it to is a coach's box with the coordinators above a football stadium in communication with the head coach. The difference is engineer. He's at the Hendrick Motorsports Campus, Mike, in Concord, North Carolina. Thanks, Larry. No live crowd at the racetrack, nor here in our studio in Charlotte. It's a little quiet here. But let's go to the 2011 Southern 500 Darlington winner, Regan Smith, to give us the vibe trackside. Well, Mike, it's certainly been unique today from the time that we rolled through the gates to get into the facilities, the checkpoints that we went through, temperature checks, you name it. NASCAR had all the protocols laid out to safely get the teams in here. Once in here, social distancing was the name of the game, whether it was going through tech or walking from holler to holler to get from point A to point B. Everybody following the rules very closely, masks on. But now we're getting down to race time. And as you'll see behind me, the teams are getting ready. The pit crews are getting warmed up. The drivers are loaded up in the race cars. The window nets are about to go up. And now is when everything feels normal. At the end of the day, there is still a trophy on the line here in a little bit. And how about you at home? You have a chance to win cash during today's race. Download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and correctly pick how six drivers will finish. And you today could win up to 50. That's $50,000. So who you got your yeah, eye on today? I was going to say, Mike, you know, if you're looking for some drivers, I mean, look no further than our pole sitter here, Brad Keselowski, former winner here at Darlington. He is really hungry to get that first win with new crew chief Jeremy Bowens here in 2020. And how do you count out this guy, Kyle Busch? I mean, got to be one of the favorites, but boy, issues in inspection. He'll be starting all the way from the rear instead of fourth place. Teammate Martin Truex Jr. Here's a guy, veteran drivers, one here looking. It's been a rough start so far in 2020 in the first four races we've run, but look for him to use this opportunity to get a win. And then experience. Kevin Harvick, he's going to be making his 24th start at Darlington. I think under these unique circumstances and challenges, I think experience is really going to pay off. But also what helps is a fast race car. These new Chevy Camaros have shown a lot of speed, especially on abrasive tracks where you need a lot of grip and downforce. Look for Chase Elliott to be one of the leaders in a Chevrolet here today. Today, each driver is honoring a health care hero by carrying that hero's name above the door. These health care workers selected by local Fox affiliates and these real heroes will give today's command. We are thankful for all health care workers across America, including South Carolina and the Darlington area. To learn more about these real heroes, visit foxsports.com slash NASCAR is back. The wait is over. Welcome back. All right, boss. Fire up. Come 
competition is this racetrack itself. This race is intense. Here we go. Good to be back, everybody. I appreciate it. Go have some fun. Live Sports is back. Darlington, South Carolina, home to the Real Heroes 400 on Fox. Presented by Geico. It's like the first sprouts of spring. The UFC broke ground last weekend, and now NASCAR is back. On an 85 degree day, typically muggy here, Jeff. How will that play in? Oh, this is already a physical track. It's a white knuckle experience, so the weather is only going to make it that much tougher on these drivers. Starting lineup top 12 blind draw Brad Kozlowski's discount tire Ford and Alex Bowman's ChevyGoods.com NOCO Chevrolet will share the front row. Matt DiBenedetto, the Motocraft Quick Lane Ford, and the M&M's Toyota of Kyle Busch, row two. The Smithfield Ford, Eric Almarola, and the Bush Light, your face here, Ford, for Kevin Harvick. Row four, the Menards Duracell Ford for Ryan Blaney and the Ally Chevrolet of seven-time champ Jimmy Johnson. Row five, the Shell Penzoil Ford for Joey Logano and the FedEx Thank You Toyota, Denny Hamlin. Row six, Chase Elliott, the Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet, and Matt Kenseth, New to the Credit One Bank, Chevrolet. Then random draw, positions 13 to 24. Clint Boyer, the Rush Trucking Mobile One Ford, and rookie Cole Custer in the Haas Tooling.com Ford. Row eight, Martin Truex Jr., the Bass Pro Shops Toyota, and Austin Dillon in the Simba Court Chevrolet. Row nine, Bubba Wallace, the Worldwide Technology Chevy, and William Byron in the Exalta Chevrolet. The tenth row, Corey LaJoy in the Drydeen Ford, and Eric Jones, the DeWalt Atomic Thank You Toyota. And back at row 11, that's where you'll find the Monster Energy Chevy of Kurt Busch and the Oscar Mayer Ford of returning Ryan Newman. Here's Regan Smith. Well, Ryan Newman, this is Regan Smith with the Fox Sports guys. You got a copy? Hey, Regan, I got you. Hey, buddy, I've never been so happy to see somebody climb behind the wheel of a race car as I am to see you behind that one today. What are you feeling right now as we get ready to go green? Uh, just uh, obviously a lot of uh, excitement about getting our sport back going, and me personally have been through a lot. Uh, but uh, I'm here, we're blessed. It's a very horrible way that I want. Most of my daughters can be here with me, and I uh, look forward to having a good race today in Austin, Iowa. All right, buddy, good luck. We'll be watching. Yeah, thank you. Boy, amazing he, that he is back in action. Mike. He said a combination of large and small miracles allowed him to walk out of that hospital in Daytona 48 hours after that grinding crash on the 500's final lap. Denny Hamlin's daughter <laughs> tweets, uh, the cover of People magazine, sabotaged by his daughter. So while we were iRacing on Fox, Denny Hamlin, who won two of the seven races and takes this very, very seriously, was contending for the lead. His daughter walked into the room to talk to him, pushed the wrong button on the remote, and took him off the air, out of the game, Oops. Oh, Mike, I'm not so sure she pushed the wrong button. I think she pushed the absolute <laughs> button she wanted to push. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that computer racing simulation uh, for seven weeks on Fox and FS1. So let's bring you up to speed. Four races in there, the winners at the top, they have punched their ticket into NASCAR's 10 race playoffs at season end. Kevin Harvick, the highest in the points of those who have not won, along with Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney, Almirola, DiBenedetto, and Kozlowski among the drivers who are in today's race. This is how they line up in standings with the cutoff for the playoffs being 16th, currently Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah, I mean, we saw some names that we would normally expect to see at the top, but then we saw some names like Kyle Busch, Mark Truex Jr., not off to a great start so far. Richard Childress Racing thanking the fans, and there is Kyle Busch, who drew the fourth starting position. But because his Joe Gibbs Toyota had to go through tech inspection multiple times, he forfeits that starting position. He will have to drop to the rear. No crew members were ejected as a consequence, however. So this time, the pace cars are going to bring the cars down pit road so each driver can check pit road speed before they line up and go green. 
Yeah, so there's a, a computer system that NASCAR has in place. These teams are going to send somebody at, to the screen of that computer as these drivers. They've calculated all this with RPM. There's no mile per hour, no, no speedometer in, on the uh, dashboards of these race cars. So they've got to get the perfect RPM and hold it at that RPM all the way up and down pit road. It is distance over time in these certain boxes, so it's easy to speed in one box, but maybe be too slow in another. That's why they want to fine tune this. They have not had the opportunity to do that before this moment right here. Guys, let's take a look at our race analysis. We're gonna go 293 laps, that's 400 miles, three stages. Stage one is 90, stage two is 95, and 108 laps to the checkered flag in stage three. Jeff just talked about it. Racing's all about speed, but not on pit road, 45 miles per hour. The fuel window is 68 to 72 laps. It will be a tire window. We'll bring you up to speed more on that on the end of the race. And a competition caution because no laps have been turned at lap 30. A chance to make adjustments on your car, Mike, and put fuel in that thing. And that procedure will be different. We'll explain it to you when it happens. If you'd like a great second screen experience, you can join the rest of our Fox NASCAR crew right now with a live watch party during the first stage of the race. They'll be reacting to the action and discussing this historical track. To join the fun, go to at NASCAR Fox on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as the Fox Sports app. Social media has been a buzz today. Blake Shelton, happy that uh, NASCAR is back. <laughs> oh, oh and a that's cool. On his buddy, Luke Bryan. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching, Blake. <laughs> Well, we know how many tickets were sold for today's race. Zero. The fans are not yet allowed back. And we are one to go right now. Jeff, you raced in front of hundreds of thousands of fans. I raced amateur sports cars where we could have introduced the fans to the drivers to save time and pre-race. So empty stands are nothing new to me, but I'll bet for these drivers and these crews, this is a whole new experience. Yeah, I think standing by the car, getting ready to go into the race, there's a lot of anticipation and energy that comes from those fans. So that wasn't there, but I promise you the nerves are there as they're behind the wheel about to take the green. Here are today's Ford track facts. 29 wins at Darlington for Ford. Bill Elliott, Chase's dad, has the most with five, including a Winston Million dollar win. Curtis Turner, 1956, through Brad Keselowski in 2018. 29 Ford winners so far. Fords, Chevys, and Toyotas make up the 40 car field today. Brad Keselowski has chosen the outside lane to lead them to green. Yeah, I mean, once you get down into turn one, you're going to want to be in that outside groove. So smart move by Brad Keselowski. A lot of wheel spin here. It's the, this track's going to be dusty, dirty. Nobody knows what the grip level is going to be like. Nobody knows if their car is going to hit the racetrack. I mean, this, this turn one is going to be a very interesting turn one and two, especially if you're leading this field. Seven drivers have never raced a cup car here. One, Quinn Hauff, has never raced anything at Darlington. But when that green flag waves, he will. And here they come off turn number four. The pace car is in. Green flag, NASCAR is back. Trouble back straight away. Around goes the 47 on the very first lap. Ricky Stenhouse with front end damage. I mean, we saw cars really wide through one and two, some even down on the apron. I mean, the unknowns of what these drivers were going into into turns one and two, Mike, I can't even describe what that must have been like. Stenhouse started 23rd. You can see here already three wide Kyle Busch on the outside all the way down on the apron. Uh, yeah, double zero gets some contact from John Hunter Nemechek. You can see Reddick still on the on the bottom. Oh, Stenhouse all the, almost four wide at the very bottom makes contact sends him directly into that inside wall and in, into that safer barrier. And in that initial skirmish one of those cars involved was Quinn Hauf, who has never turned a lap here. 
and yet started this race from 27th. So damage front and rear to Stenhouse. That looks, yeah, heavy I don't know, damage. Jeff, pretty terminal. And, and just, you know, the disappointment of how much hard work and effort went into getting this car ready to get here to the racetrack and to have it all almost, I mean, it's not completely gone, but to, to have it start like that off a of turn two, boy, that's got to be disappointing for all the everybody involved in that 47 team. On the other hand, for 39 other drivers, a needed chance to catch your breath. Well, now those that made it through turns one and two have an idea what the grip level was like, have an idea what their car's balance was like, and will have a better opportunity or understanding doing it the next time. Ricky Stenhouse into the inside wall to bring out the first caution, lap one. The NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Ricky Stenhouse's day has gone up in flames after crashing to bring out the first caution. As I said on Fox News yesterday, if we can just get past lap one. And yet, here we are. A lot of trouble back in the pack. Things stacked up. Stenhouse went way down almost to the apron to try to affect the pass, which didn't quite work. Now, when we left you in Phoenix, Kyle Larson was seventh in the point standings, but he lost his ride in the Chip Ganassi 42 after offhandedly using a racial slur during an iRacing event that was streamed online. Ganassi's favorite hashtag is I like winners. So after a conversation with Carl Edwards, he reached out to Matt Kenseth, who has not been in a cup car since the end of the 2018 season. But boy, is he good at Darlington. Five of his last seven races have resulted in a top six finish for the former champ. And he's in shape. He and Katie ran the Berlin Marathon last September, and Matt ran the New York Marathon in November. So he is ready to go and excited to be back. Here's Regan. Well, Mike, very unique on pit road. We see the crew guys who typically are up on the wall, very close to the wall waiting. They're actually sitting back behind pit wall under a tent that is separate from where their pit box is. Much like Formula One, if they get called to action, you'll see these guys jump up and run to pit wall. But right now they're practicing good social distancing, getting away and uh, catching all the shade that they can. Well, we talked about how physically fit you've got to be in the race car behind the wheel and how hot and humid it's going to be. But these pit crew members are going to go through a lot today. It's going to be very physical, very demanding on them, not just today, but the schedule that they have coming up is going to be a, a, a real grind. What about Ryan Newman, Jeff, as you see him uh, just kind of shaking it out here uh, after one lap at speed? Hasn't been in a car since February, except for a test uh, that he did here at Darlington for NASCAR before he could be cleared to get back into the race car. Yeah, he actually has some laps on this track, I believe, with this tire, this car. Um, but still, nothing's like the nerves that come along of competition. And, and I got to believe that that turn one and two was a white knuckle experience, and he probably had those hands gripped to the steering wheel extremely tight. Well, let's try this again with uh, six laps complete this time by. We'll go back to the green flag for the second time today. Racing toward a competition caution at lap 30. Kozlowski on the outside now of Kevin Harvick, both in Fords. Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman in Chevrolet's row green, two. Green, green, green. Here we go. Everybody clean through one and two. Kyle Busch up to 30th from 40th. Making some moves early on, using that high lane. I mean, you could tell it was just a much different one and two that time. These drivers knew what the grip level was like. They went through there a lot faster than they did that first time.
You know, one of the biggest challenges, not just for the drivers, but for these teams trying to set up the car with no practice, you can see the this track, how much different it is from turns one and two to three and four. Turns one and two, as we go down the front straightaway, you slam into the banking, go up to the wall, and then there's a lot of bumps as you come off a of turn two, not to mention you're using the apron uh, a lot. So the, the heights and where you're gonna set this car up, very difficult to figure out and, and be as fine-tuned as these teams like to be. 12th place battle here. The top three are all past NASCAR champions and past Darlington winners to no surprise. See Kurt Busch move, working on the outs, uh, inside where now here comes Clint Boyer to the outside with a run. And this, this, the groove and the grip is gonna change very fast. Look at the rubber already laying down on this racetrack quickly, it's just grinding that rubber right off of these tires. You're gonna see down here in turns three and four, that bottom groove might start off good, but it's gonna move up top as you see right there, William Byron on the top. Alex Bowman in the 88 to the inside of DiBenedetto. That's for fifth place. Yesterday, Bowman announced a one year contract extension with Team Hendrick. Good news for the Tucson, Arizona driver who already has a win this year. Yeah, he's off to a great start. That's great news and great momentum to come back with. You know, when you, if your team has confidence in you, wants you behind the wheel of that race car, uh, that l puts you in a position to get up on the wheel and get a little bit more out of it. Listen to that. It's beautiful. Man. Isn't that a joyful noise? <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop back and find Christopher Bell, the 95 and 22nd, with rookie John Hunter Nemechek and Martin Truex in the 19. That battle is for 22nd place. Truex is having some issues here. He's been falling back. I don't know if they missed the heights or the balance on this race car or if he's really trying to conserve those tires, but John Hunter Nemechek is. Uh, moving forward and sound looks to me like Truex is extremely loose. Here comes Kyle Busch. Oh, I mean, his teammate Kyle Busch started all the way at the rear of this field, already up to his teammate Mark Truex Jr. You know, you see Kyle Busch in that 18, and I know, Jeff, you mentioned maybe Martin Trex Jr., his teammate in the 19, saving tires. I see no reason to save tires. You know a caution is coming. Get all you can while you can get it. And I think he might be, Larry. I think that car is just very, very loose, and, and the balance is way off for Martin Truex Jr. Remember, no practice, no qualifying, as the Joe Gibbs Toyota teammates there. Uh, the 18 taking the spot from Truex. And now let's move up to seventh place, Blaney and Elliott. Remember, the engineers developed these setups and the crew chiefs. The drivers had no practice, no input. You got what you got rolling off the truck to start. Well, this is where technology plays a big role for these race teams because that technology is what allows them to go get into a sim, get, you know, do some iRacing, but also those computers could tell them a lot about the travels that these tires and these cars are going to go through as they hit this banking. But again, almost impossible to get it right, Mike, when you're back at the shop compared to actually getting here to the racetrack. Brad Keselowski has now led his last seven races at Darlington. The last driver to lead seven races in a row here? <laughs> Jeff Gordon. Hey! <laughs> I did love this place. This is a great racetrack. Kevin Harvick in second, Regan. Well, a little bit of a problem for the four car right now, Mike. He's complaining that he's got a bad vibration early on in this race, so something to keep an eye on here. That's this is not a racetrack that you want a vibration, especially as you run as fast as you run through turns one and two around this place. I, I just got to believe, Mike and Larry, that you know, rolling off here for the first time in ten weeks, I would imagine all these vibrations, all these sounds, as exciting as they are must be worrisome when it doesn't feel the way you remember it. Listen to Harvick pedal that throttle to get through the corner efficiently. We're back under green 18 laps complete in Darlington County. Brad Keselowski your leader.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who are starting to help us all move forward again. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Upper left is Mr. Ramsey's Minnow Pond. When Harold Brasington laid out this racetrack, they had to avoid it. That's why what's now turns three and four are tighter than turns one and two. The track is egg-shaped. Brasington's folly, they called it in 1950, when Harold Brasington had gone to Indianapolis and said, I want to build a super speedway in the south. And this is it. They've run the Southern 500 here since 1950. Brad Kozlowski has led every lap so far from the outside pole. Kevin Harvick second. Denny Hamlin's moved up to third. The first Toyota. Jimmy Johnson the first Chevrolet right there. The blue car in fourth. So just remember we just completed lap 11 at lap 30. It's going to be a competition caution. Now NASCAR may move that a few laps because we ran those caution laps at the beginning. But you if even if you come to pit road before that competition caution you cannot fuel the car but it's going to be a good opportunity to put four tires fuel it and make I'm sure for a lot of drivers Mike and Jeff some needed adjustments. Oh, I think there's going to be some really much needed adjustments. Maybe not for some of these guys up front setting the pace like Brad Keselowski. Uh, Kevin Harvick looks really good. You know some of our top four or five. But I, I got to say there's a lot of guys in this field that are going to be looking for big adjustments. But there's no doubt in my mind you're going to be taking four tires all day long here today. And, and you know we talk about how much this place eats up the race tires but it, it, it's just it known to be a very gritty dirty racetrack with a lot of debris you can see already on the lens here the, the pit marks from the sand and rocks that build up all that also has to go through that radiator opening you see a lot of overheating at this racetrack. Let's talk about who's most in need of that caution. Martin Truex has dropped 13 spots since the drop of the green flag back to 30th. Uh, Ryan Blaney has lost five. Matt DiBenedetto, Joey Logano, four. Austin Dillon, three. And Kyle Busch has marched to the front, has reached 25th place, and st kind of stalled out for the moment. Yeah, I actually uh, traded some text messages with Kyle Busch this week, and he was excited he was going to be starting fourth. He said, you know, that track position there at Darlington is going to mean a lot for us. We haven't had the speed that we've wanted to have this year, so that's a great place to start. We'll see how it goes. And then, of course, they had the issue in inspection, and he had to come all the way from the back. I can only imagine what kind of reaction that was for Kyle Busch. Clint Boyer drawing a bead on Joey Logano. This is 14th place. And next time by Larry when they issue the competition caution which NASCAR often does in the event of let's say rain overnight uh, or a limited or in this case no practice time. Uh, this one's going to look a little different than the competition yellows we've seen in the past. Yeah it is Mike and it's called a modified competition and what they're going to do they're going to absolutely freeze the field at the moment of caution and then the 1 through 20 and 21 through 40 they're going to alternate coming to pit road up to two times a piece as long as you don't have a pit road penalty as long as you don't get lapped on pit road and as long as you do any and everything within the rules you will maintain your position when we go back with the restart and that is the main difference between prior competition yellows they want the whole field to cycle through and complete that 30th lap. And that is the right thing to do under these unique circumstances. Ryan Newman making some nice moves. See some pit practice happening here as the caution comes out. So this is the planned competition caution at lap 30. Cars will form up single file behind the pace car. And the first 20 cars back through Austin Dillon, Ryan Priest, and Kurt Busch will be able to pit the first time by that the pits are open. Now Ricky Stenhouse is the one car out of the race after that lap one crash. He has been checked and released at the infield care center. It's not just the drivers that have been inactive for 10 weeks. What yeah. have the pit crews been doing? Oh, I mean, there's been very. You see right here, uh, 
Matt Kenseth using his hands to describe what the car is doing back to his team as he's talking to them on the radio. And, and you can see there's there's a lot of action going on there. This is one of the, the, the great veterans that uh, I had a pleasure uh, of racing against. So Matt already uh, getting dialed in with his uh, pit crew and his team there to, to make some adjustments. But yeah, Mike, this is going to be so hard on this pit crew members because it's about reps. It's, you know, it's about getting into a rhythm. And boy, these, these pit crew members have not had the opportunity to do, to do much of that at all. Now, no speedometers in these cars, just attack and of course lights on the dash for drivers to uh, estimate their pit road speed. Denny Hamlin, you saw Austin Dillon getting ready to pit and uh, not going to open the pitch this time by. I want to call out Cole Custer because the rookie is in his first cup race at Darlington in the number 41 uh, Ford for Gene Haas and Tony Stewart. He started 12th and he is running ninth uh, in these first 30 laps and that is quite a debut performance. Yeah, I mean, this is, we've been talking about it. This is a tough racetrack against some of the toughest competitors that you're ever going to face. So uh, obviously a great start, nice balance with the race car for Cole Custer. So hopefully not as many adjustments for them uh, on this first pit stop or this sequence here. Maybe they can even make up a few more spots. So after this competition caution, what's bound to happen? Larry McReynolds takes us through today's Liberty Mutual race strategy. Yeah, Mike, the fuel window is 68 to 72 laps, but I mentioned a tire window earlier. It kind of varies on the stage length. And remember, the stages are different length. This track wears tires and the grip falls off so much, you want fresh tires as often as you possibly can. The advantage you get those fresh tires is by pitting before you actually even remotely need fuel. And some of these teams have told me they may break these stages into half, possibly in the third to take full advantage of four fresh tires. So Larry, that fuel window is really kind of a fool window. <laughs> if somebody gets fresh tires, how much faster are they here than you on old tires? Yeah, Mike, if you've run probably 30 or 40 laps and somebody comes getting four fresh tires, they may be two to three seconds faster per lap than you. Wow, talk about comers and goers. <laughs> pit road is open. The first 20 cars back through Kurt Busch in the number one are allowed to pit this time by. And uh, and this is pretty much a first. These cars will pit and return to the positions in which they entered pit road. There is no race off pit road during this competition caution. Mike and Jeff, I see some teams that are making major adjustments and then probably the second time to pit road, they'll put the four fresh tires on and put the fuel in. Larry McReynolds, we see the leader of Brad Keselowski in the two car right here. He's complaining that his race car is too loose off of the exit of turn two. That means the back of the car wants to step out. He can't get enough grip. As that run went on, he told his crew chief, he said, it just feels like the track's getting less and less grip as the run goes on. Jeff, I hate to break it to him, but he's going to be saying that all day, I think. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Regan. All right, these 20 cars will go back out and assume the positions in which they came in. Then the rest of the field will pit. Brad Keselowski, the Michigander, has led every lap so far in Darlington. See on the hood of Kevin Harvick's car to the left of the B in Bush. That's a place for your face and on the quarter panel as well. Bush is running a promotion for all you fans who can't be here at the race today. Go on Twitter now and tweet a selfie with a Bush light logo. Use the hashtag your face here and hashtag Bush contest for your chance to be featured on Harvick's car in an upcoming race. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We want to be at the racetrack. We want we want to have our face on a race car, don't we, Mike? I don't have a Bush logo. <laughs> Are we el we're not eligible? Darn it. We're never eligible. We're never eligible. <laughs> All right, the cars will after that second stop line back up in the order in which they entered the pits and they're flying uh, over the track over the grandstand and the infield is our uh, Fox drone cam whoa oh. brought to you by Dyco oh now I'm now I'm dizzy thanks a lot Artie you're just showing off I know so why this procedure and why only one day at the racetrack NASCAR in coming back wanted to minimize the team's time at the track and run their first races at tracks within an easy drive of the sports hub in Charlotte. 
So no practice, no qualifying means less team members have to be at the track and teams only need one race car at the track. So we race Darlington today, going to race Darlington again Wednesday night on FS1, and then go to Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600 and another race the following Wednesday evening. So four races in 11 days for NASCAR and for Fox. The last time that happened was the early 1970s, and you know who won all four? Richard Petty, of course. Of course. Competition yellow coming to a close here. We're about to get back under green at Darlington. Ready to go back to green after the competition caution from lap 30. Everybody back in the positions they were running. Kozlowski the leader. Harvick alongside Hamlin and Johnson, Byron and Bowman, Elliott and Almirola, Custer Di Benedetto are the top 10. We're back under green. A little nudge from Jimmy Johnson to Brad Kozlowski to give him a nice push into turn one. I think that was in response of the last restart they had. Jimmy started in that outside lane, but Harvick was able to squeeze between himself and Brad Keselowski, our leader. <laughs> 31 cars on the lead lap from Brennan Poole in 32nd on back a lap down as here comes Johnson. Wait, adjustments on that pit stop. Feeling really confident about his race car, Jimmy Johnson going for the lead. And thanks, Jimmy, for uh, letting Fox ride along with you on the way to the track this morning. Or well, wasn't that special uh. way to get us started here today? Not going to complete that pass, so he had position. Alex Bowman. Here's William Byron going to the inside of Eric Almirola. Byron really fast in those early opening laps, made in, making uh, quite a few passes and getting to the front. Almirola holds on to that sixth spot. I was going to say uh, Alex Bowman had taken second in all that from Jimmy Johnson, his teammate. Kozlowski, Bowman, Johnson, then Harvick. Newman making a move to the inside. Riding on board with Matt Kenseth. Newman to 14th. You can hear that little lift off the throttle. The track's really rough right there in that section off of turn two. There's another attempt by William Byron going to the inside for sixth place. Makes it stick. Jeff, we've talked about how this track is egg shaped. The turns are very different at each end. Is either end easier to pass, or does it depend on how your car's working? Well, it's all about getting a big run off the corner, exactly what we saw uh, Alex Bowman do on his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy had to check up a little bit in that battle with Brad Keselowski. Bowman got a run from the middle of the corner and carried that momentum off the corner and down the straightaway to make that pass. So it's just all about carrying speed off the corner, Mike. There you see how tight turns three and four are. And for the lead, Alex Bowman takes it to Brad Keselowski. And here comes Johnson along for the ride. When exactly what I said is that pass for the lead happened with Alex Bowman. It forced the two car, Brad Keselowski, to have to check up a little bit. Jimmy Johnson takes advantage of it. Obviously, these Hendrick Chevrolet is really strong here today. Johnson with seven championships has now been winless for 99 straight races. This is his final season in full time NASCAR Cup competition. And everybody who's ever been a Jimmy Johnson fan hopes that at least just once he makes it back to victory lane. Well and I can see it happening on one of the most challenging racetracks right here at Darlington. He has three victories at this track. Joey Logano's first 30 laps were not so hot. But he restarted 15th, and Regan, he's climbed to 11. Well, and Mike, they had to make significant changes to that race car when they came in. Up and down pit road, a number of drivers complaining about the splitter. The splitter is the bar under the front of the race car, at the very front of the balance of the car. That was dragging the racetrack for him. It looked like these guys learned sign language during the time off. Crew chief Paul Wolf communicating with the team down here on the ground like I've never seen before, figuring out exactly where and how much that was hitting. So something to keep an eye on for this 22 car as the day goes on.
William Byron to the inside of Denny Hamlin. Oh, little oh. bump from Denny Hamlin to the rear bumper William Byron as he goes by. Well, Jeff, they've been racing each other for seven straight weeks, but it's been on the computer, on the iRacing simulation, where Byron and Hamlin uh, between them won six of the seven races. Well, we're back to real racing, but William Byron is maybe keeping some of that momentum and confidence he carried from iRacing right here into the real world at Darlington. And I, I was watching William Byron's race car as we ride on board here, Kevin Harvick looking back. And, and you could see how good his car is up high in turns three and four through the center. Car's turning good. Look at how he really gains on Kevin Harvick here off of turn two. Little run to your bumper in line. All clear. Now you look at the way this courses of asphalt are laid out and the seams have a filler in them. You can see it black along those cracks that designate the different courses of asphalt. Yeah, there are certain racetracks like uh, California Speedway that we were at earlier in the year where when you're on top of those cracks, uh, it really loosens up the race car. I would say turn two, there's so much going on and those seams that it is no fun to cross over those seams. But for the most part, this track, uh, you don't notice them as much as you would think you would. William Byron is one of four 22 year old drivers in today's race as he closes up on Kevin Harvick. And I think he is going to be remembered for setting a new standard for young drivers at the top level of the sport because he got his start in racing on his home computer and then moved into a legends car then late model cars and up the NASCAR ladder very quickly to the top levels of the sport. Denny Hamlin riding high through turns three and four right up next to that wall using whatever grip he can find. And you see how much momentum that carries him off the exit as you saw the four car of Kevin Harvick use that bottom lane in, uh, through turns three and four instead. Here are today's USAA biggest movers Ryan Newman up six spots since the restart. Alex Bowman Kyle Busch up four. And these numbers might look low but Jeff this is such a difficult place to pass. It really is. I mean, you know, there, there's really maybe a couple different groups through three and four, but through turns one and two, there's one group. So your passing happens when the car starts to change, when the track starts to change. As you see Denny Hamlin make this move for fifth place, the tires have to start wearing and falling off. That's when the passes start to happen. So we, as we run throughout this race, you'll see those cars that have the long run speed and those that have the short run speed. Larry Ryan Newman started this race 21st. He restarted 15th and now he's picked up four more spots. What might they have changed during the caution? Well, let's go back to Regan Smith's report about a lot of drivers complaining about the front splitter hitting the racetrack. But there's a way that you can get it up off the racetrack. Right there on the shock shaft, you see all of this right here? That's like ride limiters. And if your car's bottoming out, you can just slide a little shim on that shock shaft and get the splitter up off. If you feel like the car's too high, you can pull it out. That's exactly what Scott Graves, Ryan Newman's crew chief, did on that pit stop. That's why the car is so much better. Thanks, Larry. Third place. Veteran champion, Brad Kozlowski, trying to hold off. Young William Byron, without success, Byron moves to third. Now, among the drivers backing up right now is that blue number four Ford of Kevin Harvick. Regan, what's up? Well, early reports from Kevin Harvick was the car was just a little bit too loose, meaning the rear tires were sliding. They made minimal adjustments on that first pit stop, Mike. That car is actually plowing now, and by plowing, it means the right front wants to go straight towards the wall. Kevin told me yesterday he thought these race cars would get tight and start going towards the wall as the race went on. I don't think he expected it quite this early, though. Fifty six laps complete. Ninety laps will mark the end of stage one. Alex Bowman already with a win in his pocket in 2020 is your leader in Darlington. Sixty one laps complete in Darlington County Alex Bowman has been out in front for the last 17 of them. It's the first time the 27 year old has led. 
at NASCAR's first super speedway. He won the third race of the season at California, just signed a contract extension. Could life be any better <laughs> for Alex Bowman right now? No, or Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, top three, you got Chase Elliott back in seventh, not quite as good as his teammates. But, uh, boy, you know, since since they've been away from the racetrack, all these teams have been doing their homework. And right now it looks like these uh, Chevrolets are really in a league of their own. But a uh, lot still to happen in this race before we get to uh, see who's really going to be the one to beat. So, Jeff, racetracks are like golf courses. No two are the same, but the grip level can be very similar. So let's see, Alex Bowman won last year at Chicago Land Speedway. He won earlier at Auto Club Speedway. What does this track have in common with those two tracks? Well, they're, they're both abrasive and, and have a lot of fall off. And you got grip, something more? grip level. Oh, yeah. Grip level is a zero to yeah. a one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, I, I think a lot of people were pointing at the cars that were strong in Fontana. And so, yeah, to your point, Larry, you know, not a lot of grip, a lot of fall off, tires wear out. And uh, there's a lot of comparisons to this racetrack here. Denny Hamlin completes his pass of Brad Keselowski for fourth, while Matt Kenseth trying to hold off Tyler Reddick for 14th to no avail. Nice clean pass there by Tyler Reddick going to the inside through one and two. Xfinity Series champ. There's another young man who likes an abrasive racetrack. Oh yeah, he likes to slide around. He likes to run right up against the wall. You see him, Tyler Reddick in that number eight. Caterpillar Chevrolet right up against the wall coming off of turn four. Yeah, this is a guy who has some dirt experience, loves to slide around, and when the track starts to go away like this and the tires fall off, that's when you're sliding and, and treating it as if it is a dirt track. 65 laps complete. NASCAR's fifth race of the season, first race back. What could be better on a Sunday than we crank it up? Brought to you by GEICO. That's the sound race fans have been waiting for 10 weeks to hear. Is that not the sweetest sound, Mike? Oh, man, does it feel good to hear those engines roar like that. Alex Bowman, three and a half up on teammate Jimmy Johnson and teammate William Byron. Rick Hendricks Chevrolet's one, two, three. Denny Hamlin's Joe Gibbs Toyota in fourth and Brad Keselowski's Roger Penske Ford. The pole sit around out the top five. Larry, 20 to go in this stage. I'll bet some of these drivers are crying for tires. Are they going to get any? Well, I would say a lot of them are screaming at the top of their lungs right now. But we went back racing with 51 laps to go in this stage, Mike. Unless we have a caution, you've got what you've got right here. I think they'll run it all the way to lap 90, which ends this first stage. 
Pretty nice return here for Ryan Newman. Impressive. We talk about what a miracle it is to see him on track, but he's in the top 10, Mike. The first time he saw Darlington Raceway, he was a protege of Penske Racing, who asked super speedway expert Buddy Baker to show him the ropes and be his driver coach. He says he and Buddy drove around Darlington in a streetcar and he was hooked. <laughs> if you're a racer and, and you come from the background that Ryan Newman did, the open wheel uh, midgets and sprint cars that race at places like Salem and, and Winchester, you love the high banks of Darlington. Well, now this says it all from Twitter and Hall of Famer Mark Martin. Yes, it is a beautiful sight and beautiful sounds. NASCAR is back. 73 laps complete in the Real Heroes 400. Darlington Raceway, the Southern 500 since 1950 at NASCAR's original super speedway. David Pearson was a master of this place. Bill Elliott won here five times. Earnhardt tamed it. Waltrip, and oh yeah, a kid named Jeff Gordon <laughs> has been to Victory Lane here. What was it like winning for the first time at Darlington? Well, it's such a challenging racetrack. You go to it, and and you know you think, especially as a young kid, I can attack this racetrack. But then you find out really quickly why it's called the track too tough to tame, why there's the Darlington stripe. This is a track you have to have the utmost respect for. Race the racetrack. Don't worry too much about those competitors. Got to take care of those tires. Well, let's get back to the track because Alex Bowman's three and a half second lead has disappeared. Jimmy Johnson is there and going for the lead. He's going to use that lap car ahead as a pick. Yeah, you saw Alex Bowman have a little bit of a wiggle coming off of turn two. Jimmy Johnson was able to carry some speed off of there a little bit more to make that inside uh, pass happen. Here comes Alex <laughs> Bowman not wanting to give up that lead. And I'm noticing my lap traffic's playing a big role in what's happening up front. Every time Alex Bowman caught some lap traffic, really allowed Jimmy Johnson to close up. Also, I noticed a different line off of turn two. You see Alex Bowman up New high, leader, Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Of course, we, we, we knew we were going to hear that from spotter Earl Barbin on Jimmy Johnson. And, but you see Jimmy's using all the apron off of turn two. He's all four tires down there. So two totally different approaches. You know, guys, I think a lot of people wondered what these drivers would be physically ready for this race after being out of a race car 71 days. I don't think anybody questioned Jimmy Johnson. This is a man that a year ago ran a race on Saturday night and on Monday ran the Boston Marathon. And that about says it all yeah, right it there. Yeah, it says it all. Yep. Well, I think Jimmy Johnson, I, I don't know what he felt like what it was going to, how it was going to go coming back today. I think he felt pretty comfortable. A big slide by Christopher Bell off of turn two there underneath Ryan Blaney. But I think Jimmy Johnson looked at this schedule coming up and he said, oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that because of how physically fit he is. Battle there for 18th. The Josh Balicki car, the seven of Tommy Baldwin, three laps down. And now here comes other teammate to Alex Bowman, William Byron, and that 24 Exalta Chevrolet coming quickly. I, I believe Alex Bowman's wore those tires out. And there's the FedEx Toyota of Denny Hamlin closing in also. Even into the corner. Byron prevails up and, into second. And when it comes to saving tires, I don't know if anybody does it better than Denny Hamlin is. He's going to make that move on Alex Bowman to the inside down the back straightaway. Still there. Barely clear, clear, all clear. Third place for Hamlin with six to go in stage one. This is going to be a really valuable lesson for these drivers and, and also the teams. They're going to figure out what they can do maybe with some air pressure. Um, you know, they're going to know a little bit more about the heights of their race cars. Now that they've had a longer run, they're going to look at that tire wear and make some adjustments. But obviously, Alex Bowman had a very fast race car for about half of this run, three quarters of this run, but now falling back. 
Yeah, I think to win this race, you have to have a short run car and a long run car. Mike, you asked Jeff about what it was like to win the first time. How about asking what it was like to win the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, <laughs> the sixth, and the seventh? The man won here seven times. Larry, we got all day. <laughs> now, now, Larry, I'm still wondering, though, how I get a short run car and a long run yeah, car. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, four laps to go in the shortest stage of the day. Stage one, 90 laps, but with the competition caution at lap 30, this is essentially a 50-plus lap run. Stage two will be 95 laps. The final stage will be 108 laps for a total of 293 or 400 miles. Ninety-nine and counting. Jimmy Johnson and crew chief Chad Knaus raced to seven championships and then the magic just disappeared. They separated and neither has gone to victory lane since. And for Johnson and for Knaus, that is a bit of a surprise, especially uh, to see Jimmy Johnson have a winless streak of this duration. Well, and, and you know, I don't care how many races and championships you've won, your confidence can get broken. And I believe that Jimmy Johnson's been looking for that spark, that magic. He's got the fitness down. And I think he and Cliff Daniels have that. But also, if Jimmy's looking at his mirror, look, he's driving the wheels off this thing. He wants his stage win. And he's looking at his mirror, seeing the 24 car, William Byron, and his old crew chief, Chad Canales, closing in a little bit, as well as Denny Hamlin. Yeah, William Byron's got a mirror full of Hamlin who is rim riding that car. Last lap, stage one. Well, I talked about Denny Hamlin being so good at saving tires. He knows where to push in the beginning of a run, not use up too much of those tires, not build those air pressures up too much. And he's also, oh, Jimmy Johnson no! going around. Into the wall hard. Unbelievable, our leader. Shaking his head, boy, you know he's frustrated with that. Had such a great car, great race going on. Came up on some lap traffic there. I know his car had been really loose. You could see the back end hanging out on the exit, but I don't know what happened, what may have caused that oh. car to come around. Johnson was a couple of hundred feet for only his third stage win since NASCAR adopted this form of racing. From aerial coverage, he's pulling up for the four, we're pulling up on a slower car. That's Chris Busher in the 17. So you see Jimmy turns down low, runs all four on that apron like he's been doing. Oh, the Caught 17 him. had to check up just a little bit, and Jimmy's right front made contact and turned him around. Boy, it didn't take much, just the tiniest bit. Oh, yeah, you can see the 17 of Busher just gets a little loose, makes a little contact. The outside wall checks up. He and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, that ally Chevrolet, make contact. Boy, so disappointing. Of all the unbelievable things I've seen in this sport, that is right up there. Jimmy Johnson going for the stage win. Crashes. NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Build Ford Proud. And by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. We're under caution the end of stage one. Here's another look at what takes Jimmy Johnson out of this race. This is the final lap at the end of this stage one. Jimmy Johnson closes up on Chris Buescher. Right here, he checks up, gives him some space. And as Chris Buescher gets down on the apron and comes up back onto the racetrack, he has to check up, he gets loose. Jimmy Johnson just could not anticipate quick enough, and it was impossible to do so that Buescher was gonna have to lift and slow down that much. William Byron wins the stage from Denny Hamlin, Alex Bowman, and Kevin Harvick. Four tire changes, and we're told on Harvick's car, they're gonna raise the track bar two rounds to correct a tight condition on his Ford. There's Harvick pulling in. Left side's being finished up on Alex Bowman. There's that adjustment in the right rear. Boy, that 88's had a good pit stop, so is the 11. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Harvick. Harvick. That number one pit stall really paying off for Kevin Harvick. 
pit stall positions were chosen D1, in order Mac, of owner points going into this race. There's the Ram race off pit road. Harvick up three, Bowman up one. And let's check in with Regan. Well, William Byron, this is Regan Smith of the Fox Sports. Guys, you got me? Yeah, so far, I got you. Well, certainly an exciting end to that stage right there. I know the wind was good to get. Not the way you anticipated getting it, though. How's your car been so far? Yeah, it's been good. You know, we kind of stuck on the bottom for that one restart. Heard us pretty bad, but uh, other than that, we've been pretty solid. So just got to keep it going. You told me yesterday you expected to be able to move around this racetrack a lot with the experience you've gotten over the years at this place. How's that working out? Uh, that's good. I mean, typical Darlington. Slicker during the daytime. Place is really temperamental, so... Just got to take, take care of the tires, so do what happens. All right, good luck taking care of those tires. Thanks. Thanks, Regan. Stage one is over. William Byron, the winner of stage number one, the former computer racer, now a NASCAR Cup star. Fox analyst talking about dropping the flag and dropping the hammer. No practice, no qualifying. That's what we've had to do here at Darlington as we're ready to begin stage two. And they said it best. You know, you just your creature habit. You want to get into the rhythm and momentum of the race. And here we go back green. Through the Geico restart zone to the green flag and off to turns one and two. Bowman from the bottom or Harvick from the top? Who's going to lead it? Well, we saw Bowman really be aggressive earlier in this race to get that lead, but he used up those tires. I'm a little surprised here. He's being aggressive again, trying to get to that lead with Kevin Harvick. Looks like he's going to settle in in second now. Kyle Busch sneaking into the picture, making a move to the inside of the 14 of Clint Boyer. Not going to happen, though. Kurt Busch to the inside. Yeah, you really had, you heard Kyle Busch have to check up right there, like the front of the car. Maybe that splitter was on the racetrack or he got really tight off of turn two. Tyler Reddick there, also in that, he's a rookie, you know, in the eight car in that Caterpillar Chevrolet. Man, he is really impressing me today. Here comes Kyle Busch in the M&M's Toyota back underneath his brother, Kurt Busch. And Jimmy Johnson, after crashing on the last lap of stage one, will finish 37th today. Regan's with him. Well, Jimmy, certainly not the interview we thought we'd be doing based on how that first stage started. Looked like you had a lightning fast 48 car today. Was there anything different off a of turn two you could have done over there? Yeah, I'm, gosh, what I would do to get that corner back to, uh, to do it over again. Coming to the end of the stage and just trying to make sure I got a good run off of turn two and I felt like I felt like I was going to be able to exit the corner side by side with them and things just went horribly wrong there. So I yeah, what a great car. I feel terrible for my team. For everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Very thankful for Ally and all of their support. Uh, we've got great race cars and things are coming the right direction. It's unfortunate that, um, that things just really didn't turn out there off of turn two. All right, Jimmy, thanks for sticking around and talking to us. Uh, better luck next week. Thank you. Well, to add to Jimmy's discomfort, 37th, where he finishes today, that is where he will start Wednesday night when we return to Darlington. Yeah, just absolute insult to injury there for Jimmy Johnson. And I, I like this comment, so, you know, that's a veteran driver who says, I wish I could have done something different. Not blaming it on anybody else, just looking at it, analyzing it, and running it back through your mind and try to make sure that that doesn't happen the next time you're in that same position. Now watch these two, the six and the nine, working their way from the back of the pack. Newman finished stage one in ninth place. Chase Elliott finished 10th. But both were nabbed for speeding on pit road, so they had to restart tail end. Regan? Mike, to make that even more frustrating for the nine car of Chase Elliott, as we saw the cars come down pit road for a speed limit check at the beginning of the race, they made comment that they were too fast in some of the sections. They were good in a couple of them, but too fast in others. They had anticipated backing that down a little bit, but as you can see, that already bit him right there, a pit road penalty when it probably didn't need to happen. Well, you know, the, the list is long when you start thinking about all the things you have to check off and get right and all the things that can go wrong. And that's certainly one of them that has bit 
the number nine team, the Napa Chevrolet, Chase Elliott, and uh, you'll see him make a pretty big adjustment that next time down pit road. We return to Darlington Wednesday evening on FS1 for the Toyota 500 kilometer NASCAR Cup race. Kevin Harvick out in front now for 11 laps. He's got a half a second now on Alex Bowman. And here's Joey Logano uh, just outside the top 10. Larry. Yeah, this would be our subway right combination right here. Joey Logano on that 22 car. He started back in the ninth position. Regan Smith reported that that car was bottoming out. Paul Wolf had to really go to work on that car. He's working his way back toward the top 10. But think about the right combination. I would say winning two of the first four races, considering Joey only had one win in the previous 33 races before joining up with Paul Wolf. I'd say they got it happening right now with the subway right combination. Absolutely. The question here will be can that momentum carry over over a 10 week layoff. And I think it can. I, I really like what I'm seeing out of this combination. Paul Wolf's a sharp crew chief. We've seen what he can do with Brad Keselowski in the past. But I just think this combination Joey Logano uh, and, and Paul Wolf. I think the chemistry is there and you're going to see that play out on a race like today. This is a long tough race where the things are going to change a lot. And the, the, to me, the teams that have the best chemistry are the ones that are going to be there at the end and battle for a win. Don't count him out yet. Timmy Hill limped his way onto pit road as we're up front with Denny Hamlin in fourth place, taking the high road to chase William Byron. Yeah, we saw both of these cars, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, the 24 of William Byron. They were two of the best cars at the end of that stage. Now here they are battling it out but you can see a pretty big gap uh, ahead of them those guys have really taken off and, and run away from them I, I'm going to be very anxious to see if this stays green if those cars back up to these two yeah that's a three second differential from Bowman back to Byron a little wiggle there on entry Ooh, Hamlin yeah. pounces yeah you saw where Denny had been running that high line off of turn two and this time it looked like maybe William was going to try that high line. Denny Hamlin takes advantage. Oh, whoa, big moment for the 24. I think he. He got it. Yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah, but I think Mike, I don't know if that's a tire, but you saw him wiggle getting into the corner. He had an issue off right of turn rear. two. Yep. Yeah, right rear tires down. That sent him into the wall. No caution, though. Another tough break for Rick Hendrick Chevrolet's. First uh, Jimmy Johnson. Oh, he's going to now... spin. William Byron brings out the caution. Yeah, the carcass on that tire, the tread came off of it, sending that 24 car around. Well, you said it, Mike. Those Hendrick Chevrolets looked unbelievable at the start of this race, and now nothing's going right for them. So this is going into turn three after Denny Hamlin just made the move. You saw right away an issue for William Byron in that 24 car. The car wiggled, stepped out. He just tried to correct it and made contact with outside wall. I really believe this started back off of turn two because when Denny was able to get to the inside of him, that had not been the lane that he had been running. And he had to, to, to really check up there when Denny went by. I, th I think something was going on even earlier. Eric Jones had to jump on the brakes. Evasive action there. Well, at one time in stage one, Rick Hendrick had all of the top three spots. Now he's got one car on the trailer and one here in tatters. Well, about to go on the trailer. Jimmy Johnson's car out of the race. And again, Mike, I just say so much, you know, build up and anticipation work, you know, un under unique set of circumstances at the shop trying to prepare these race cars to get ready and, and know that this is such a huge moment for sports, huge moment for motorsports, and you want to thrive. And it looked like they came prepared, and then some things have started to unravel for a couple of those Chevrolets, including that right rear tire after it went flat on William Byron's 24 car. Let's ride with Denny Hamlin through this. 
So this is through one and two. You can see the 24 car wiggles a little bit, even gets loose there off of turn two. I think that's when it all started. I think it was a slow leak in that right rear tire. As he goes down the back straightaway, then he goes by. Watch the back end step out on that 24 car right there. Big moment. He tries to correct it and just runs out of room. Because of the safety inner liner, you don't see the tire go all the way down to the rim unless that also uh, suffers a sudden air loss. And then William trying to hustle it back to get back to pit road, try to fix some of that damage, get four tires on it, and the round the car goes in one and two, bringing out the caution. Speaking of four tires, we'd run 12 laps, and here they come. Hit the pit road, four tires. Hey, crew chief, if we ran two laps, I want to be <laughs> on pit road for four. Riding with Denny Hamlin in. Four tires. We saw this 11 car. They, they have a very strong pit uh, crew, and they made a great pit stop the last time they were on pit road. Also, here's a 14 clip Boyer, and that team going to work on the right side. Brigham. We see the 88 of Alex Bowman right here, rolling that left front tire, and what you can't see is crew chief Greg Ives. He's not on top of the pit box. He is actually behind pit wall working something very unique. We don't know really see that. Larry Mack, how many times have you ever had to roll a tire in like that? <laughs> I used to have to do a lot of things that these crew chiefs don't do today. <laughs> Kevin Harvick wins the Ram race off pit road from Alex Bowman. Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch each grab spots. As does Tyler Reddick. At 112 laps, the complexion of this race has really changed. Jimmy Johnson in the garage. William Byron in trouble. NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. Getting ready to restart at Darlington. Football's Watt brothers taking the game of tag to the ultimate level. Get ready for the craziest, most intense game of tag you've ever seen. Ultimate Tag premieres Wednesday after the Masked Singer season finale on Fox. Kevin Harvick, the only driver to finish in the top 10 in every race this year, with Alex Bowman on the front row for this restart. Boy, Twitter's been busy today. NASCAR, the number one trending topic including our old buddy DW <laughs> race the <laughs> racetrack. Good advice. Absolutely. I can promise you that's what helped me win a bunch of races at this track. Green flag once again. Alex Bowman's got a fight on his hands for second. Oh, yeah. I don't think those guys lifted running side by side all the way through one turns one and two. Kurt Busch making a run here to the front. Kurt Busch for Chip Ganassi. When Ganassi hired Matt Kenseth, it uh, put together a reunion of these two who each won championships at Roush Racing. And both Bush and Kenseth proclaim that the other is the best teammate they ever had. <laughs> well, that ought to make him a good combination. Bush to second. Bowman drops to third. Then Hamlin, Keslowski, Almirola. And a lot of credit going to Kevin Harvick and that race team. I mean, their pit crew has been solid on pit road, but that number one pit stall with owner points has put them in a great position. A little contact here with Joey Logano and Eric Almirola. But that, that number one pit stall has been pretty big today so far for Kevin Harvick, giving him that clean air, getting him out front. These two are going at it here. Joey Logano, Eric Almirola. Boy, Logano's car has come to life. He is up to sixth. I believe that's his highest running order of the race so far. Regan. Well, we see the great racing on track right now there, Mike. Unfortunately for Alex, or for William Byron, he is no longer a part of that. The team thought they heard him say right before he spun, he had a loose wheel. He confirmed that after the spin and after the contact with the wall. Loose wheel is what caused that problem. Martin Truex up to 10th on the right of your screen. Boy, I mean, this guy has had quite the day. He was uh, back in 30th position, really didn't gain any positions. They've been super loose all day long, damaged to the right front, and now, now he's in 10th place. 
Hashtag NASCAR is back and how. Trending number one on social media right now. Martin Truex trending forward. Yes, he is. And this is what I expected out of this team. Here's a battle. Clint Boyer, teammate Eric Almarola. Eric having some issues going backwards right now in this early stages after this caution. I got to say, Mike, I had the best time interacting with Clint Boyer during this time off. We did those broadcasts for iRacing. We did some Wednesday night shows. He is quite the character. I mean, we had a lot of fun. He just, the guy constantly is, uh, is just keeping you laughing and having a good time and a heck of a race car driver on the track also. He it, could he could be a stand up comic <laughs> if you could ever get him to stand still <laughs> yeah. and that rarely happens but uh, great personality and uh, he could be a force in this one and now here comes Reddick down to the inside once again trying to bring that Chevrolet further forward the two time Xfinity champ one of our top rookies. And Jeff Boyer had a lot of fun with you and his chief beat your 49ers back in the Super Bowl. Now see, Larry, why would you have to bring that up? See, I was trying to put that behind me. <laughs> it will never be behind you. <laughs> oh, when it comes I, to football and old grudges, you can always count on Larry Mack. I, I was going to say, thank God I don't have a, uh, a, a college team that I go for no. because I know where this conversation would go. Back up front, the number four, Kevin Harvick. You know, since he joined Stuart Haas and drove this number four car, he has never finished outside the top ten at Darlington. And I think that just tells you a lot about Kevin Harvick. I mean, he is just a fierce competitor. That experience, the, the way that he drives a race car, uh, you know, really plays out at a challenging track where it's such a narrow groove. You've got to you just just be on such a thin uh, razor blade of the balance and that edge of the grip and navigate around this tough racetrack. He's one of the best and he's teamed up with one of the best teams. We've long called him the closer, but here he is leading this race. Oh, around goes Suarez. Daniel Suarez. And this brings us under caution for the fifth time today. The Gaunt Brothers Toyota. Looks like a right rear tire down on Suarez. He came in here 31st in points, uh, not one of the charter teams, so uh, great effort there. Now this is somewhat similar. I know we heard Regan say that there's a loose tire on the 24 car, but this is something kind of similar. Comes off a of turn two. Doesn't look like he made any contact with the wall or anything, but the tire clearly was down and then he was able to catch it a little bit sooner, get the car slowed down, not causing any damage getting into the wall. He was running 26th and on the lead lap uh, at the time of caution. Quick review, out of the race, Ricky Stenhouse crashed out on lap one. B.J. McLeod retired his car early. Jimmy Johnson at the end of stage one, racing to that checkered flag, ran into the back of Chris Buescher and crashed out of the race. Quinn Howe with a lot of damage, 82 laps down. And among those uh, in the running, Garrett Smithley seven laps back, Timmy Hill minus four, and William Byron repaired the car that he spun. He is now three laps down. Brennan Poole should get the free pass on this caution flag. He is the first car one lap down, so he'll get that lap back. Interesting time in here, Larry Mack, for this uh, caution to come out. Some decisions on pit road. What do you think, crew chief? Well, I know we've only run eight laps, but what I would like to do is come here and get four more tires. Here's the reason. You were going to have to try to run 70 laps. If you pit here and get four fresh tires, that moves it to about 55 to 57 laps, which I think is much more doable on one set of tires. Should we stay caution free to the end of this second stage? I would come and get four fresh tires. I like the way you're thinking, Larry. <laughs> I know I wouldn't want to give up track position. I think some of these guys up front are going to have a tough time making that decision, but I think it's the right one. Our uh, Fox drone cam brought to you by Geico. Having a great day here, keeping up under caution. Now, see that building? That's the Earnhardt Tower. Uh, the four media members allowed to be in attendance uh, stationed there. 
That used to be turn two when this track was built. It was right alongside the highway was the front stretch grandstand. Boys, it's feeding time. <laughs> and then things changed. Well, the pace car stayed out. <laughs> <laughs> it has to. Looks like pretty standard stop here for the 11. No adjustment, just four tires. Regan? Well, Kurt Busch, had, Kurt Busch has had a very nice steady run through the field today. Jeff, right now sitting in second position, they felt like where they would excel today is his ability to decipher what a race car is doing. That's been evident. They made big changes early on, not so big changes right now. That race car is pushing the right front just a little bit at this moment. I got to tell you guys, too, I, I want on no tires here, and I was sitting here screaming, I want tires. Give me tires right now. <laughs> And once again, Kevin Harvick takes advantage of that number one pit stall. He can accelerate that short distance to the timing line that establishes the race off pit road. Harvick back out in front after this caution for Daniel Suarez spin. Welcome back to the Real Heroes 400 on Fox presented by Geico. Cleaning up from Daniel Suarez spin. Friday Night Smackdown, all new every week on Fox. This week, champion versus champion, Bailey takes on Charlotte Flair. Plus the next round in the tournament for the Intercontinental Belt. Smackdown, Fridays at 8, 7 Central, only on Fox. Then a bit of a Smackdown here in Darlington County, South Carolina. Jimmy Johnson crashed out of the race. Ricky Stenhouse out on lap number one. We restart with 29 lead lap cars. Green flag. That was Kevin Harvick's spotter, Tim Fedewa. As you got Alex Bowman now in second, Denny Hamlin battling Kurt Busch for third. Hamlin with the advantage there. Yeah, Kevin Harvick in that pit crew on pit road, putting a smack down on the competition, getting them off pit road again out in that clean air. But Alex Bowman right there on his heels. Here's a pretty nice battle going on here. And how about Martin Truex Jr.? struggled at the beginning of this race. He struggled this season so far, but boy, he is marching his way to the front right now. Just moved into the top 10. Alex Bowman not letting Kevin Harvick gain any daylight up front. An eerie sight, Darlington Raceway, absent of fans, but boy, a familiar sound. How is it different on a race day with no fans? Let's ask Regan Smith. Well, Mike, we see Alex Bowman on the racetrack right now, stalking Kevin Harvick, having a good day on the racetrack, also having a very good day in the pits. Dustin Lineback, Jack Van for Alex Bowman. This has been an extremely unique day. What's it been like for you guys on pit road? Well, it's been it's been really different. You know, we we're out here. We're practicing social distancing. Normally on a on normal Sunday, it's a lot of family oriented stuff with every team. You know, that's how this sport is, and it's a lot of high fives and handshakes. Today, everyone's long waves and you know, salutes and different things like that. But you know, not having the fans here can be disappointing because you know that's that's a lot of our motivation. But bringing them this race to Darlington, you know, on television is awesome. So we're. You know, grateful to be out here, and we got a good car. Pit stops have been going well, so looking for the rest of the race. All right, Dustin, thanks for talking to us. We certainly look forward to having those fans back in the stands, Mike, especially a place like Darlington. This is the closest pit road to the fans. It's tough to not see them up there. Absolutely. Martin Truex going by Matt DiBenedetto into the eighth spot. You know, when NASCAR first indicated its willingness to get cars back on track, it was South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and the public officials in the Palmetto State who said, hey, we're open for business. We'd love to have you. And being such a short distance from NASCAR's hub where the teams are all headquartered in Charlotte uh, so they could get down and back in one day made this an easy choice. 
Ryan Blaney way down to the inside there. <laughs> Close quarters there. That's for a 19th place yes, battling yeah. Ryan Priest. Yeah, Ryan Priest. Putting a lot of pressure on Ryan Blaney. Got a good run through turns one and two. Riding on board here with Austin Dillon. Chris Buescher, the 17 in 18. Priest trying for that spot. These two teammates last year. Now, Chris Buescher over there. Roush Fenway racing. Ryan Priest makes that pass happen. Now Blaney with a try stuck his nose down there. Nothing there. Here comes Matt Kenseth. Kenseth didn't sit idle last year, although he was not cup racing. He won the Slinger Nationals in his native Wisconsin in 2019 with a last lap pass of Ty Majeski. And then at Madison, Wisconsin last August, he led the 31 laps early. Majeski ended up winning. Kenseth finished fourth, so no grass has been growing under Matt's feet. Listen, Matt's one of those quiet guys, doesn't, doesn't really tout, you know, about how talented he is or, or his accomplishments. But I, I got to tell you, one of the best race car drivers I ever competed against, and he still proves it today by getting out there. And, and whether he's competing in a marathon or competing at Slinger or here at Darlington, uh, this guy's just one of the best. First time back in a cup car since November Homestead of 2018. He won here in 2013. Lost to Dillon behind him there 22nd. There's that Southern 500 we just spoke of. Great battle with his, his teammate Kyle Busch. Makes it stick on the outside and takes the checkered flag. Oldest driver in the field today at age 48. Competing against drivers half his age and trying to get his way to the front in that Joe Gibbs, or rather, excuse me, in that Chip Ganassi Chevrolet. And, and I, you know, I got to believe right now Matt Kenseth might be in the best shape of his life to be prepared to do what he's about to do and run that 42 car in all these races and on this hot and treacherous racetrack today. Haven't talked a lot about Brad Keselowski since, uh, you know, he started this race up front on the pole, led us for a little while and then started falling back. Now he's sort of settled in that sixth position, but Tyler Reddick, the exact opposite. This guy started deep in the field, what, I think 29th and has worked his way all the way to seventh. Regan, I like Tyler Reddick. He's got, he's got, he doesn't have so much a gas pedal as an on-off switch, full go all the time. Mike, he's one of the most exciting drivers in this series. And in particular, we go to these racetracks where you run the wall, it's like he finds an extra half a second somewhere out of nowhere. His biggest concern when this race started was actually not going down a lap during the first run of the race before the competition to caution. It's been the opposite. You talk about how far forward he's moved, riding comfortably in the top 10. So nice run for the rookie right now. Yeah, due to the draw, uh, the random draw used to start the race, he could have started between 25th and 36th and took the green flag back in row 15 in 29th place. Not the only rookie having a nice solid start to this day. Also, John Hunter Nemechek back at 14th. Reddick finished second in the cup or in the Xfinity race here last year. The way he's running that car, hard to believe. It's his first time here in NASCAR Cup competition. Kevin Harvick, your leader. The impacts of COVID-19 are felt across every industry, including the restaurant community. Our favorite restaurants are working hard to stay open and serve food and drinks that bring us together. So join Coca-Cola in a conversation on Twitter. Tell them about the restaurant you love using hashtag we love this place and tagging at Coca-Cola. And show the restaurant some love by ordering a meal from your favorite place. 148 laps complete. 
here in Darlington. Riding with Ryan Newman his first race back since that horrifying crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500. He's a member of the Coca Cola family of drivers. And uh, Newman currently in 11th place. Oh, well, we got some debris on the nose here of the 11. Denny Hamlin. Well, that looks like it was a repair that fell off of some other car. Yeah, we've seen some cars with some damage and have to use a lot of tape. You see oh. our leader, Kevin Harvick, goes by. It's up against the wall. Oh, it's it actually, was a banner. Yeah, it's actually the banner. Not, yeah, from the sign. That was supposed to be an adhesive sign and supposed to stay stuck to the wall. But you see when cars get the Darlington stripe here. I was going to say, Mike, you can't have adhesive billboards at Darlington. You know they're going to tear that off with the right side. Look at the, the dash. You can see the lights flashing. He's getting really hot right now. That water temperature and oil temperature, Larry. Yeah, that's what those debris, lights are flashing off. right there. And what off. he's going to probably try to do is get up behind another car and change the pressure on that nose and see if he can pull it off. But that is a huge piece of debris. I don't know if he can be able to pull that off getting up behind somebody yeah, else. Larry, you know, if it's plastic or paper, it's one thing. But when it's tape with that much adhesive or, you know, that, that banner with that adhesive, it's going to be hard to pull that off. And that's a big piece. Hamlin with a hand out the window trying to find a break in the traffic. Yeah, he's trying they to wave. Pit. Well, he wants to wave those guys by. He wants to get them in front of him so that he can get close to the rear bumper. Like Larry said, try to get some turbulent air to pull that debris off. But uh, he's going to have to get more aggressive with that. Here goes Clint Boyer to his inside. Now Hamlin's got to try to tuck right up to Boyer and let the prefer pressure differential. Yeah, he's trying try to, to pull that away. Trying to get that big run, gets right to his rear bumper. There it goes. Oh, now he got it off. Great job, but it goes back to the red. Right there, Luckily, it's I'll not covering. What is this, a game I'll of tag? <laughs> Great. Yeah, now, and luckily for Tyler Reddick, it goes to the right front fender. And, but I think Tyler might have another issue here, but doesn't cover yeah. the opening. You can live with that, right? Yeah, that's not going to be a problem. You know, doesn't cover the brake opening or the radiator duct opening but cost him a couple positions it clearly changed the aerodynamics of that car yeah and jeff remember there's an aero duct in that right front it definitely will change the handling if it covers that duct i wonder if he was working that car back and forth trying to see if he had a tire problem or maybe just not initially knowing what that was i think i'd go back to painting signs on the walls <laughs> if i were darlington raceway definitely at darlington Caution is out at lap 154. Sixth caution of the day. Well, a lot of credit to Denny Hamlin, the way he positioned this run to the rear bumper. Clint Boyer, Clint's probably wondering why is he all over my rear bumper? But right there, he gets to the rear bumper. Now watch that adhesive just hops right from his car, sucks underneath the car and connects to the eight of Tyler Reddick's front bumper. You can see one piece of that is in that uh, that that duct that Larry talked about, that aero duct that changes the airflow around the nose of these race cars. This is the Bizarro World 400. <laughs> Look, the strange things that have happened today. My goodness. Larry Mack, sixth caution flag, 154 is the lap count. We go to 185 to the end of stage two. What do you want to do here? Yeah, I mean, you've got to come, Mike, because we've basically run about uh, 25 laps, and you this will put you halfway through your 12 sets of tires. They had 12 sets, including what they started on. This would be the sixth set going on. So, yeah, I think everybody will be hitting pit road. And the track has sent workers out to remove the rest of that self adhesive vinyl which adheres pretty well until cars start rubbing up against it. That happens here when you can see somebody has gotten into the wall and started to peel it away. If I had to guess that's what started all this. Well, it's a busy couple of weeks on Fox and for NASCAR as we return to the track Tuesday night at 8 Xfinity Racing here at Darlington Raceway on FS1. 
And then these same stars of the NASCAR Cup Series will be right back here Wednesday night on FS1 for the Toyota 500. Traditionally, Memorial Day weekend, we are at Charlotte and we won't disappoint you. We'll be there. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Coca-Cola 600, next Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's right here on Fox. Got a great lineup of racing, Mike. You got Darlington, a couple races at this challenging racetrack. Oh, look at the right side of the 18. I think we know who got into that sign, peeled it away from the wall. That's pretty heavy damage there to the 18 car, of, uh, Kyle Busch. Is that, that is rubbing the tire, isn't it? You see a little bit of black there uh, that's come off the tire and onto that fender. Yeah, I mean. And a little bit of that vinyl as well. The right side up pretty good there. Pretty lucky that that caution came out when it did, or Kyle Busch may have been the caution. I don't know what to put down for the reason for the caution. I'm just going to write banner. How's that? <laughs> I've never wrote down wall debris before. <laughs> right. Regan. Well, Denny Hamlin, it was like an orchestra out there on the racetrack between himself, his crew chief, and his spotter talking cars to him so that they could get the debris off of the front of that race car. He's been happy with that race car right now. It's just a little bit too tight through the center of turns one and two. It means the front wants to drive to the wall through turns one and two. Kurt Busch getting four on the left, Clint Boyer on the right. See an adjustment on the 88 of Alex Bowman as the four car has been so good on pit road using that number one pit stall launches out of his box going to win oh, a battle handling. off pit road easy. Keselowski nice jump up for him into second place and Martin Truex pit crew puts him up into the top five six caution flag of the day at Darlington. Good luck today uh, in the uh, race, and I know you're going to do great. I miss it. I miss the cars going by. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. That's my ringtone. So do good. Remember, six feet apart. I understand. Keep the cars a little spaced. Maybe decide up front who wins, just to keep it fun. You know what I mean? But I'm looking forward to those interviews in the cars while you're driving like this. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. You know, just gotta clutch it up and then zap it in the fourth, and then, you know, I think we got a chance. All right, gotta go draft. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. All right, oh, Daniel. We're all having fun, so it's David, that's great. Daniel Suarez got the free pass. We're ready to restart. Harvick and Keslowski on the front row. Kurt Busch and Truex, Boyer and Logano, Bowman and Hamlin, Newman and Jones, the top 10. After a caution to uh, repair the banner and the barrier. They're at turn two. Tyler Reddick said it really changed the handling on his car when that banner got on his nose. We're back under green. Still there, corner, still there, still there. Bumper barely, bumper, 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 bumper. Kurt's trying to get inside. Outside, top's covered behind the 19. Don't look now, but here comes Mark Truex Jr. Yes. That was uh, Coleman Presley spotting for number two, Brad Kozlowski. And boy, Brad, I mean, he made a move where he tried to squeeze in a hole that was not there, thought a second about it, you know, at the last second, and luckily was able to keep his car from uh, making contact, so moves into second place there, but boy, that, that got really tight. Kurt Busch ends up losing a spot, falls in behind the 22 of Logano. Here comes Hamlin on the inside. Denny Hamlin racing Kurt Busch for fifth place. Regan. Well, fortunate break that caution came out, Mike, because Denny still did have a piece of this debris on the front of his race car. They were able to pit, get this off of the car. And in a world where you don't want things to stick to the front of your car like this, Kevin Harvick came in a few laps ago for that pit stop. They wanted to put tape on the nose of his race car. They couldn't get it to stick. So Denny's got stuff he doesn't want. Kevin wants stuff on the front of his car, and he can't get it on there. It's been that kind of day. So why would they want to put tape on the nose of the car? You, you, you put it over the radiator opening right there, and what that does, that improves the front downforce, the grip of the front tires. It also reduces the drag on the straightaway, 
but it's a balance between putting too much or not enough because the car will overheat if you put too much on that nose, but it's all about trying to improve the downforce. Yeah, and Larry, we've been seeing the Ford team making some adjustments in the rear of that car, trying to raise that track bar up to loosen the back of the car. I think now they've gotten the back where they want it. They're trying to plant that front end. That tape would have helped to do that for Kevin Harvick. Harvick out front by four tenths on Keselowski and Truex is right there. It has uh, been quite a march for Martin who started the race off with a car that was ill handling in the first 30 laps but they have kept tuning on it and I think now they've got it right. Well and Mike you know he started very very loose. I think two things have happened. They've made some great adjustments but also the track has evolved. The track has come to them. I think that you know as loose as he was I think now it's starting to get really good. These other guys have been battling a very tight situation. Great point, Jeff, because remember, we started this race with no practice, no qualifying, and that means no rubber laid down and worked into the racetrack. Now you can see those black uh, marks starting to form through the corners as the rubber gets worked into the track and the handling of the cars change. And one of the handling characteristics of this racetrack as we go on board here, the M&M's Toyota of Kyle Busch. You, as you land into the banking, you really slide the front tires up to the wall, wait for them to grab so you can get back into the throttle. So if your car's turning good, you can carry more speed through the center and keep that momentum on the exit. Alex Bowman going for sixth place on Denny Hamlin. Been an interesting up and down day for Kyle Busch. Time for our maximum performance presented by Blue Emu. There is a graph of Kyle's day. He drew fourth starting position but had to start tail end Charlie because of a penalty going through inspection too many times before passing. Got up as high as ninth. Currently 20th. Well, and, and I think he got a little bit lucky by that caution. He'd made contact with the outside wall, had damage to the right side. How good of a job did that team do on that caution to fix that damage? And can they make it a little bit better? You can see they've got those fenders pulled out pretty nicely. Jeff, they definitely took some time to repair that car because he restarted back in 25th and he has now made his way back inside the top 20. I'd say that graph will start trending the right direction now. Cole Custer, we mentioned it in the first 30 lap run. He is having quite a day uh, for a young man who has never raced a cup car at Darlington. Pretty impressed with all of our rookies here today. Cole Custer. Talked about him in 19th. Christopher Bell in 15th. John now, Hunter Nemechek in 16th. And of course, Reddick. Now, seriously, your first time here, Jeff. I know you've won it seven times, <laughs> you've won at Darlington, but your first time to race here in a cup car. Were you intimidated? I mean, I was, but I got to be honest, it, it went, it was going pretty well. I had a fast race car, uh, you know, and, and I came out of the Xfinity series with some confidence at this racetrack. And I just felt like back then, you know, you could control your own destiny a lot more than you could today. Aerodynamics weren't near as important. It's about that mechanical grip and saving those tires. And I felt like I did a pretty good job of that, although the results might not show for it. <laughs> <laughs> they did soon enough. Here's John Hunter Nemechek, 16th. Christopher Bell just ahead of him in 15th. It's been a pretty good day for the rookies. On board with our leader Kevin Harvick here from the roof cam. This is into turn three. Can make a real late entrance there. Pretty heavy on the brakes. Let it drift all the way up to the wall. Try to carry as much momentum off of turn four. It's going to come up on some traffic here. Have to navigate. Luckily, they let him go by. He goes to the high side. We can see here how much more throttle and speed you can carry through turn Spinner four. Spinner out two. of turn four. And a car against the wall that'll Mr. put us Bell, under caution. Yes. Why does that always happen when I'm taking us for a ride around this place? Man, <laughs> I was having fun. It's been an odd day. <laughs> like 173, seventh caution. Now you know how I feel every time I talk about a caution coming out. Well, the right side looks pretty good on Christopher Bell. I don't know if he made contact with the left side. 
I didn't see any other car involved Jeff when he went uh, went spinning off turn four and he was running as we just said he was running in the top 15. Car looks pretty clean. Only 11 laps to go in this stage you'll see him off in the distance. Yeah, Way he just up high. starts to get loose early in the middle of turns three and four. Does a long slide. Ryan Blaney avoids him. There pops. Oh, he did make some yeah. contact with that left front. Might not have made much uh, aerodynamic uh, damage to the left front, but could have caused some damage to that left front geometry. See a plastic bag on the nose of the two car, uh, Brad Keselowski. Hey, how about that 51 Joey Gase's car? If you squint, that's the old Bobby Allison Coke machine. 1972, Richard Petty and Bobby Allison had such a battle here that they came to the line, nose to tail, both cars smoking, and they both said, if the lap, if the race had gone one more lap, the third place car probably <laughs> would have won it. That was at the height of the Petty Allison feud. Boy, if this track could talk. Regan. Mike Martin Truex Jr. has not been happy all day long. Finally, right before that last caution just came out, crew chief James Small came on the radio and said, you're the fastest car on the track right now. Once the caution did come out, driver all quiet. Look for minimal adjustments for this race car. I can't confirm or deny, Jeff. I've had three crew chiefs come up to me and say, please don't talk about their cars anymore. <laughs> Taking a little longer on Harvick's car oh, yeah. this time. He is not yes, going to. Yes, she's on the left side on the four out. car. Brad Keselowski off out front, and Mark Trex Jr. with a nice pit stop. They were side by side at the line with Logano close, completing this round of pit stops. NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. The official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. And by Coca Cola, a premier partner of the NASCAR Cup Series. 176 laps complete in Darlington. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who are starting to help us all move forward again. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Brennan Poole gets the free pass on this seventh caution flag of the day. Boy, we've had a little bit of everything here. Cars crashing that we certainly didn't expect. Jimmy Johnson racing toward the checkered flag at the end of stage number one. William Byron having trouble as he was running well. Uh, a banner on the wall comes unstuck and causes grief for two of our competitors. What next, Jeff? Well, and this is one of those tracks that creates havoc for drivers and teams, so not totally surprised. But um, you know, long way to go in this race, and we're gonna we're really starting to see who the real players are, and, and those teams that have come here really well prepared as we come back to green. Green flag to finish off stage two. Keslowski and Truex from the front row. Still outside. Still there. Logano and Bowman. Still there. Kurt quarter. Busch and Boyer. Quarter. Still there. Quarter coming to your door. Be that is Truex's here. spotter, Clayton Hughes. And you do, right? Yeah, you can really <laughs> see the advantage of that outside lane. Brad Keselowski took advantage of it. Kevin Harvick after losing some positions on pit road fighting back. Yeah, Larry, what happened to put Harvick so far back coming off pit road? Mike, it was a bad stop. It just kept getting worse. When they dropped the jack on the right side, the tire changer got his hose hung on the splitter. The gun was stuck in the wheel opening, and he was so late going around to the left side. The jack man couldn't get around him to jack the left side up. It just kept getting worse the deeper they went. Well, now just six laps to go in stage number two. Yeah. You see some guys really battling hard trying to get that stage win between the two of Brad Keselowski Alex Bowman back in the picture now. Keselowski's gained his spots on two on pit road. He's gained at least two positions on each of the last couple of pit stops. 
Newman and Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace. Ooh, they got really tight there. The six car of Newman had to drift high as Bubba Walsh was right there, no room. As the six of Newman was able to slide up in front of him as they get to turn one to two. Austin Dillon in line behind his teammate, Reddick. Nemechek looking low on the three of Dillon. That's for 19th. Coming to the end of stage two, all proven winners at the front of the field till you get to seventh place. And Ryan Priest, who's had a nice drive up to the front, giving JTG Doherty Racing something uh, to smile about after his teammate Ricky Stenhouse crashed out of the race on lap one. There are points at stake for the first 10 finishers in each stage, plus playoff points to the stage winner that carry you all the way through to the penultimate race of the season. And, and trust me, those points, they add up, they matter. We, we've seen in the past where all those stage points can help you advance from one round to another when we get to the playoffs later in the season. So these drivers and teams know you got to fight hard for every one of these top 10 positions. 10th is Eric Jones. He's going to work on his Joe Gibbs teammate, Denny Hamlin. And with two laps to go in the stage, pit road closes. That's to deny teams running further back and not battling for stage points the chance to get in, get tires, and then start the next stage up front. And I'm going to be anxious to see this next stage. I know we're not done with this one. It's going to get exciting here in these final laps. But I'm anxious to see Mark Truex Jr. on a long run. It looks like that car takes off a little bit edgy, but it comes to life after about five or six laps. Ford, Chevy, Toyota, one, two, three. Keselowski, Bowman, and Truex. Final lap, stage two. You can see two different lines there. Keselowski up top, those others at the bottom. Going to work for Brad Keselowski. Kozlowski gets that green and white checkered flag for his second stage win of the season. He also won stage two at Phoenix. Team Penske and the Ford Mustang of Brad Kozlowski victorious at stage two. Two in Darlington, South Carolina. Here's how the Coca-Cola racing family is faring. Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin in the top 10. Ryan Newman, Austin Dillon, Bubba Wallace in the top 20. Daniel Suarez had a spin earlier to bring out the caution at lap 20, 123. He's currently 28. The pits are open. Here they come off turn number four, and everybody on the lead lap will head for pit road. Led by Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch there. Here comes the 88 of Alex Bowman. Right side's going up. 14 of Clint Boyer. See any adjustments? Pretty happy with this car. He's in the top five. Martin Truex says he needs more speed, and he's concerned about the four. There's the four of Kevin Harvick. Well, what you really need to be concerned of is that four on pit road, that number one pit stall, and that fast pit crew. They will come out third behind Bowman and Keselowski. Thirty cars on the lead lap exiting pit road. Here's Regan. Well, Brad Keselowski, let's see if we can dial him up on the radio. Brad, hey, this is Regan Smith with the Fox Sports Group. You got me. Brad, this is Regan with Fox Sports. Have you got me? Regan here on channel two. We'll try that again. Let's uh, one more time. Brad, Regan with Fox Sports, do you have us? Regan, what's up? Well, you had a heck of a start to the day from the pole, and then you managed to fall back just a little bit. Now you're back up front. That race car looks pretty good. Have you got what it takes to get to the end here? We look pretty decent, you know, if you get to the front. It's, 
uh, make it wide and, and do the best you can. Uh, Bowman here's been pretty good, Harvard's been pretty good. Uh, we're right there with them. I'm just trying to find a little bit more to be able to stay in front of them. All right, good luck out there to the rest of the way, man. We're having fun watching you guys. Thanks. Thank you, bud. I'm just glad Regan's got this job this weekend. He makes me feel a bit better. We have that happen to us all the time up in the booth. You got your A channel, you got your B channel, you got this other channel over here. 190 laps complete in the Real Heroes 400, presented by GEICO. Ready to start the final stage of this race. It started a promising day for Jimmy Johnson until this, right at the end of stage one. Yeah, Jimmy was the leader coming to the end of that stage. Makes contact with Chris Buescher. Sends his number 48 ally Chevrolet around and into the wall and out of the race. Jimmy then turned to social media. Man, that hurts. What a bummer. It's a race in a few days. We'll be back. Stuff happens. It's racing. Um, the good news is that 48 is fast. My team is on it. My Camaro is fast. Great support from Ally. Great support from my fans. Um, this will sting a little on the drive home. There's no doubt. But uh, I will use this and learn from it. And I will be back Wednesday. And it is on. All right, champ. We'll see you Wednesday night on FS1 when we race 500 kilometers at the same Darlington Raceway. Lights out atop the pace car, Brad Kozlowski to the inside of Alex Bowman this time. And here they come to the Geico restart zone to begin the final stage and take us to the checkers at lap 293. spotter. Yeah, and you can see Kevin Harvick give Brad Keselowski a nice push into turn one to get him that lead and almost worked out for Kevin Harvick too, but now he's going to fall back into fourth place. Power move by Martin Truex who went around Harvick and into third. Yeah, let's see if James Small made some adjustments on that number 19. Toyota for Martin Truex Jr. and to see if he got this car a little more speed that Martin was asking for. To me, this car looks like it's got plenty of speed when the tires get older. Truex trying to become the first Toyota driver to lead a lap today. Well, when we just when we think of the domination that Toyota has had in this series last year, the year before that, I mean, they've been incredible. Hard to believe that they have not led a lap yet today. And really, so far this season, Mike, have not showed that type of domination. But I, I think Truex, he's, he's got the race car. I mean, he is all over these two guys ahead of him, so he's got a fast race car right now. And Denny Hamlin right behind him, too. Uh, so there's a couple Toyotas that I think are going to have a great shot at this race. Eric Jones in seventh, a former Darlington winner. There's Kurt Busch going to the bottom, looking for fifth place, and Hamlin. Up front, Bowman closing in. We've definitely seen, you know, Bowman has some great short run speed. Uh, we saw where he, he really faded on one of our longer runs earlier in this race and lost some positions at the end of it, but he certainly has the short run speed that he needs. Well, now that we're mostly single file and cars are on fresh tires, here are the Xfinity uh, fastest times for the last lap completed. Bowman, quickest car on the racetrack. Kozlowski, Harvick, Kurt Busch, and Truex in that order. 
well, one lap ago. Certainly helps to be out front, have that clean air. And Bowman maybe even getting a little bit of a toe off of Brad Kiss last year leader to put that fast lap up there. Kurt Busch looking strong right now. Working that bottom lane, you'll actually get down on the apron where the banking's a little bit less and it de-wedges the car, allows that left front tire to uh, get the car to rotate. So you'll watch some guys work that lower lane down in turns three and four. 2003, Kurt Busch figured in the closest finish in NASCAR history when he and Ricky Craven banged and beat on each other all the way to the line and were separated by two one thousandths of a second. We mentioned Eric Jones. Here he is in seventh place, Regan. Well, Mike, the 2019 winner of the Darlington Southern 500 slowly working his way forward today. That race car as he's gotten inside the top 10 continues to get better for him. Right now he's happy with the car, just needed that track position that he has gained running in seventh at the moment. This is a long run car, much like the one that he had last fall was. So look for him to make some noise if we can get some long runs at the end of this thing. And that's exactly what we're going to see play out here, Mike. You know, all day long, we, we've been interrupted with some cautions, haven't seen the real long runs. That is a game changer at this racetrack. The, you know, when you start to wear out those tires and build up those air pressures and the track lays rubber, maybe even some cloud cover comes in, everything changes on you. And I like what we're seeing here, uh, Jeff. We're seeing uh, top loaders and we're seeing bottom feeders. Some drivers trying to take the longest possible way around, others trying to glue to the bottom, whichever works best for their race car at this moment. Yeah, we're going to get a chance to see the difference between what we're seeing right now, this great battle between Tyler Reddick and Chase Elliott. You've got Matt Kenseth in there. The daytime offers a completely different type of racetrack, and it gets really slick, and you see more grooves open up. We'll see a different race on Wednesday when we're racing at night. Chase Elliott clears Reddick. Here comes Kenseth as three Camaros battle for 10th spot. And Ryan Priest coming into the picture. He's been real happy with his race car all day. Very few adjustments on those pit stops. Joey Logano and Clint Boyer ahead of that group. Eighth and ninth. We actually saw Clint Boyer move into the top five at the end of that last stage. So. Pretty happy with his car, pretty happy with his long run speed. Gave up a couple of spots on pit road, restarted eighth, currently ninth. You'd never know, Matt Kenseth has been away from the sport for a year or at the top level. Ran a few short track races, won a big one in Wisconsin, nothing bigger than the Slinger Nationals. And here he is for Chip Ganassi. My, my Happy head. to be back and part of a team again, he said. Yeah, that's so cool. Such a great story to have Matt back. You know, this, I, this is a testament to all these teams. Um, they have done so much work to get prepared and under a very difficult certain set of circumstances to just fire off into turn one without ever taking a lap. Uh, I can't tell you how difficult that is. And uh, I applaud all of those that were a part of allowing this and making this happen here today. Brian Brees, former champion of the open wheel wheel and modified tour where his granddad was a top car builder back in the 1970s. And uh, he's like a Tyler Reddick. He's got two speeds full on <laughs> and parked. You know, <laughs> he's no, a he, wheel Listen, he goes for it. When yep. you when you drive those mod those modifieds have a lot of grip, a lot of speed, a lot of power. And when you can drive one of those modifieds, you can drive about anything. Was in the top 10, I think seventh at the end of the stage. Fell back a bit in the pits, currently 13th. Fifth place, Hamlin and Bush. We've seen glimpses of Denny Hamlin being great in this in this race, but these last couple runs, we've not seen it. I don't know if the balance of the cars changed. We saw we had that issue with the debris on the nose ever since then. He, he, he just has kind of been settled in into this fifth or sixth place position. Great pictures from the Geico drone. Rolling around the infield over the uh, turn three and four tunnel. And looking back at the highway that runs alongside what is now the backstretch. 
at Darlington. Brad Keselowski led early, led most of the first 50 laps. He's now been out front three times or four times for a total of 72 laps. And totally different circumstances, right? He led us to the first corner, completely green racetrack, and, and the track was changing very, very fast. And we saw where Brad Keselowski either used up his tires, didn't have the right balance, and fell back at the beginning of this race. Now they've made adjustments. The track has come to him. He's able to maintain that lead up front right now. See Clint Boyer working on Joey Logano, goes to the inside. All four tires down on that lower apron I talked about. Slides up in front of Joey Logano, completes the pass. Jeff, is this a part of the race when you're just grinding it out? You got 83 laps to go. You know you're going to have at least one more stop for tires. You hope. And, and usually, Mike, this is that point in the race where you start to see long runs. So you start to get yourself settled in and take care of those tires for that long run. We'll be right back to the Real Heroes 400 on Fox, presented by GEICO, after these messages. Welcome back to Darlington on Fox. Mike Choi with Jeff Gordon and Larry McReynolds. Caution is out. Chris Busher has spun and done a lot of damage to his uh, number 17 Roush Racing Ford. And as the caution flag flew, Joey Logano had come to pit road with a loose wheel. So there's Logano on pit road in the middle of your screen. And there's Busher having having problems. Well, yeah, look, I don't know if the 95 of Christopher Bell was trying to make a pass, but they made contact with one another, spun the 17 of Busher around, and then causing all four of his tires to go flat and drug through the splitter and a lot of things to get back to pit road. And we're told Logano did get to uh, the, the uh, timing line at the center of pit road, the start finish line as that caution waved ahead of the race leader and stays on the lead lap. And Mike, that was a heads up by his spotter, TJ Majors and Paul Wolf to have him keep going down pit road because had he stopped, he would not have beat that leader. Thanks, Larry. Now, the spotters are not in their usual location. Uh, they started the race pretty well spread out along the top row of the grandstand, still maintaining social distancing. Pits are open. Free pass will be Reed Sorensen for the second time today. He'll get back on the lead lap. That'll give us uh, 30 lead lap cars when we restart. Busher did lose a lap uh, after the spin. Matt Kenseth in ninth place. Kyle Busch, 13th. And Ryan Newman in his comeback race, currently 18th. All well positioned on the lead lap. And here they come. Denny Hamlin coming to a stop. Four tires, no adjustments on the right side. See Mark Truex Jr. Looking for some speed on that 19 car, but he has the long run speed, no adjustments so far. Jeff, we're getting to a part of the race where the track is definitely changing. It's starting to cool down. I would not be a surprise to see possibly some adjustments on these cars. You may only make one more trip to pit road after this. Everybody finished up, and Keselowski, second to Harvick in the race off pit road. Well, they, I think he may have gotten him at the camera, though, Mike. That camera line is that white line. I believe Kevin Harvick wins yes. the battle off pit road. Yes, he does. Just a matter of inches. Well, 78 laps to go. It is time for today's Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. Jeff, 
Well, the guy I'm watching just got off pit road first. His pit crew has been strong all day long. That number one pit stall, Kevin Harvick, I think is going to get out front and experience is going to get him the win today. But Jeff, you've got to be strong on that racetrack. Brad Keselowski has 30 career wins, but if we're almost one year to the date since his last win at Kansas last spring. I think our 2012 champion will celebrate his first win with new crew chief Jeremy Bullins. Larry Mack, give me the guy who's got a new contract this week. Alex Bowman just re up for another year with Hendrick Motorsports. He has been extremely good on these low grip racetracks his entire career, including a win at California earlier this season on a low grip racetrack. Alex Bowman, when it gets down to the wire, is my guy today. Martin Truex won here in 2016, leading only 28 laps. His day didn't start well. The car was really loose, but James Small keeps making it better and better and better. And that's your Credit One Bank, ones to watch. Let's take you back and review some of the things that have happened on NASCAR's return to the racetrack. Brad Keselowski drew the pole for today's race. Led a bunch of laps, but on lap one, Ricky Stenhouse way down to the inside, smashed the inside wall and is out of the race. End of stage one, Jimmy Johnson. With one lap to go, Chris Buescher has to lift coming off turn two. Johnson can't avoid him. He smacks the inside wall out of the race. William Byron goes to the front, and then he has an issue, doing heavy damage to the 24, who is now seven laps down. Here's your progressive race summary at lap 217. Kevin Harvick, one of six leaders, 10 lead changes, 30 cars in the lead lap, and we've had nine caution flags. Remember that thing, Mike, I was talking about? This is the time in the race where there's long runs and, and not a lot of cautions, and then we had a caution. <laughs> so well, um, I, I keep, you know it's gonna happen. It always does. And, and I got to believe that, um, you know, we're, we're going to see things change a good bit when that long run comes. And I feel like it's coming right right about now. Larry, you got 12 sets of tires for today. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, they've used nine sets now, Mike. So there's still three sets laying in the pits. And what we've seen, if you've run any laps whatsoever, you're going to come get four fresh tires. And I'll hold off till I give you my trends of the race. Oh, I was in no <laughs> hurry for that. We've got time. Let's have a look at today's Toyota top performers. Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin in the top five. Last fall's winner here, Eric Jones in the top ten. Kyle Busch one spot out of the top ten. And I'm not sure who I'm more impressed with, Mike. Martin Truex Jr. coming from as deep as he has with the troubles he's had, or Kyle Busch coming all the way from the back. Feet away, Kevin Harvick spotter. Here. Keep Man, there's a lot of pushing That's and shoving on, on the, the intensity is picking up as we get later into this race. Starting to see Chase Elliott sneak into the picture now, into the top five, goes to the outside of Martin Truex Jr. Great aerial coverage, a lot of jostling for spots at the back of that top 10 and deeper in the field. Everybody trying to take advantage of the restart and get what they can get. And I'll tell you what you want. You want that clean air like Kevin Harvick has. And a lot of these guys up front have experienced what it's like to have it. Harvick's had it at times. Keselowski, Bowman. They know what it's like and how much better their car drives up front with that clean air. So they're going to battle hard for it. Brian Blaney coming on the inside mid pack. He's he's been mired mid pack all day. He's in 18th place. He's been working the inside. Now he had a chance to get up in the high groove and draw a bead on Ryan Newman. But boy, it's been tough going for that number 12 today. It certainly has. 
you know, Todd Gordon, crew chief. He and Blaney still, you know, it's a new, new relationship with these two guys, so they're going to be working through some of that. But, yeah, didn't expect when you see the other Penske Fords running up front, you would expect Ryan Blaney to be right there with them. Trying to hang on to that lead pack at 18th. Kevin Harvick in these first four races. We're all waiting for him to make some noise. Fifth He's at been Daytona. Consistent though, Mike. Eighth at Las Vegas, ninth at California, and almost at a track that at one time he pretty much owned, Phoenix. But you know, Mike, that's a veteran move right there. That's knowing that his car, maybe they need to make a few adjustments. They got to get the performance a little bit better, get all the finishes and get the consistency you can right now as you see this battle going on between Alex Bowman, Brad Keselowski for second place. But I believe that when a veteran driver like Kevin Harvick can maintain those great, solid, consistent finishes, days like this pop up and you take advantage of it and you go and you win. And that's why he's the point leader. Nobody else has four top 10 finishes this year. That's right. Two hundred twenty five laps complete with Kevin Harvick leading Alex Bowman. You won't miss a minute as Fox takes you side by side at Darlington. those who are starting to help us all move forward again. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Left of your screen in blue, Kevin Harvick, and black Alex Bowman trying to chase him down from nine tenths of a second back. Brad Keselowski, third in the white Ford. Chase Elliott up for fourth, and Martin Truex Jr. holding down the top five. Ninth place, looking back from Denny Hamlin at rookie Tyler Reddick. Well, a great drive by Tyler Reddick. Remember, he, he had that issue where the debris came off the nose of Denny Hamlin's car, fell back onto his car, and he said on the radio it was almost undrivable how much it changed the aerodynamic and the uh, aerodynamics and the grip of that car. They had to pull that debris off, fell back on a pit stop. He has worked his way back up into the top ten. And how about Matt Kenseth right there behind him in 11th place, putting a solid run in here. Jeff, he's doing exactly what we thought he would do. It took him a little while to get back acclimated, and there he is, just headed toward the top 10. Woo, a nice slide as we go in to the in, uh, onboard camera there. Back in, definitely jumped out on Matt, Matt Kenseth as he put that right rear out there and slid it through the corner. Oh, yeah, he's loose. That 42 car right now is loose. And on the lower left, you can see him play the throttle. That green trace wide open right now. 
off the throttle into the corner completely and then he'll pedal it a bit before he gets back to full throttle coming off. Look at him working those hands all the way out to the wall. Matt Kenseth hard at work. So Mike let's go ahead and kind of set up some possible strategy. Remember we talked about it kind of near the end of stage one. We went back racing at lap 218 with 75 to go. That that's almost outside the fuel window. Plus you'd be so far off on tires. I think where if we stay green where the chess match will come is remember I talked about how much fresh tires are valuable over old tires. I think you split that run in half and you pit somewhere around lap 245 to 250 and get full advantage of those fresh tires. Well, it won't be that long for Martin Truex. He's called in that he has a loose wheel He's on the number 19. They're ready time. for him. I mean, you know, one of the toughest pit roads to try to get to under green, Mike, is this one right here at Darlington. It, you have all that apron to work with to turn off. You can't see the entry to pit road, and it's extremely slick because of all the debris and sand down on that apron. Regan. Well, guys, he actually called out on the back straight away that it was getting better. He doesn't know what's going on, so crew chief James Small immediately said, stay out, stay out, don't pit yet if it's getting better. They gave it another lap, and we see him stay out on the racetrack yet again, so possibly that loose wheel's getting better. They don't know. Martin doesn't know. We don't know. Wow. What's the risk-to-reward ratio on this? I've never heard a loose wheel get better, no. so it's either not a loose wheel or it's about to get really, really bad. I tried to sell some drivers it was going to get better, <laughs> but it just wasn't. <laughs> so Truex stays out and stays in sixth place. He's about 1.1 seconds ahead of Clint Boyer. Jeff, I got a Sunday afternoon need for speed, and I want to make my ears bleed. It's time to crank it up again. Oh, yes, please. Two thirty nine to complete fifty four to go Harvick the leader Bowman second Chase Elliott now up for third over Kurt Busch and Brad Keselowski has faded to the fifth spot and uh, back to Truex if you pick up some loose rubber some bits of rubber on the track the tire and wheel go out of balance 
Will that feel like a loose wheel, perhaps? Absolutely, Mike. You know, you could definitely pick up some debris. I've had that happen before where I thought it was a loose wheel and it was just chunks of rubber. And there's a lot of chunks of rubber being torn off these race tires here this weekend in Darlington. So it could have very possibly been just that because when it's a loose wheel, you feel it in the wheel, you feel it in the brake pedal, and it does not go away. It continues to get worse. Side by side for 11. When we were riding on board and the crank it up there, you could hear the throttle response from Kyle Busch and, and watch that battle that he was having with Matt Kenseth running two completely different lines. Matt Kenseth with all four tires down the apron through turns one and two. Kyle Busch look, working that high line and eventually it looked to me like Kyle Busch's car just had a little bit more speed. Now Austin Dillon going after Matt Kenseth. Think about Kyle Busch. Less than 100 laps ago, they were on pit road repairing the right side. He restarted back in 25th. What's the song say? You can't keep a good man down. He just <laughs> keeps fighting back. He is a fighter. And I know this is not the kind of day he was hoping for. I think, you know, he was hoping to start up front and battle and lead this race. But uh, instead, it's been one of those grinds where he's just had to fight for everything he's got. Kyle Busch trying to race his way into the top 10 as Kevin Harvick leads Alex Bowman by 2.6 seconds. We'll take you Fox side by side. Six laps to go in the Real Heroes 400 on Fox presented by Geico and Kevin Harvick has 2.6 seconds on Alex Bowman. Good battle here is Martin Truex and Brad Keselowski discuss fifth place behind Harvick Bowman Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott. And we've, now, se we've seen where Brad Keselowski when he has clean air and he gets out front. He can hold on and maintain that lead, but when he loses that track position, it seems like his car maybe gets really tight in traffic and he starts to fade like he is right now. And we talked at the top of the show about the fool window, also known as the fuel <laughs> window, but Larry, you want to go 44 more laps on this set of tires? And, and honestly, I think that's stretching the fuel and stretching the tires, Mike, and that's go back to what I said a while ago. And we're getting close to that, that point where you split this run in half and you would pit with somewhere around 35 to 40 to go. If that's what they're doing, where the chess match really kicks in, 
who makes the commitment first? Because once somebody comes, you just really can't afford to just stay out there on old tires. One well, and to add to that risk, Larry, it's so difficult to get to this pit road. You have to slow down a lot to just get the car rotated and get down on the apron, make it to pit road. The chances of missing the pit road entry are very high. So yeah, I definitely don't want to be the first one down pit road. I think Josh Balicki just ran out of fuel. He coasted very slowly down pit road and finally made it into his stall. Kyle Busch racing Tyler Reddick for ninth while older brother Kurt Busch is up to third and gaining ground on our leader. And if they do pit guys this is where that pit crew they have to be spot on because remember it's been 71 days since they made pit stops on pit road and the next trip to pit road would be the 10th pit stop. And Ryan Newman has spun down in turn one. He came very slow down into the corner. Now gets going again. And that brings out the 10th caution flag. Strategy strategy. Well, I was going to say, was Larry about to say trends? <laughs> I wasn't quite there. <laughs> Not quite there, were you, Larry? But the caution is out, and that's going to change everything. These guys are really happy that that caution came out when it did because that puts him in a great window. Now, Newman was running 17th, and he was off speed going down to turn one. I thought perhaps he had run out of gas, but let's take a look and see what happens to uh, Ryan Newman. We're going to pick him up at turn four on this replay. Oh, man, he got really loose. I don't know if he was, I don't think he was trying to get to pit road. It's possible, but I think he just got really loose in the middle of turns three and four, saved it, lost all that momentum. And then that was just riding on board. There's nothing oh, yet. That boy, boy, that almost looked like a tire issue, yeah. like, like it was going low. Because you could see he was just walking it up the racetrack trying to save it right there. Now the question, he, I'm, I'm going to guess he spins, yeah. yeah. Spins down here. That's going to bring out the caution. Well, he almost got into that inside wall at the same time. So a nice lazy slide for Ryan Newman in his first race back since that horrific crash at Daytona. But uh, good to see him back in the race car. As our Geico drone has a look at, you know, it takes a lot of people to put on a race even with no fans in the grandstand or in the infield. NASCAR limited the number of crewmen and mechanics and personnel each team was allowed to bring to the track. They were all scanned coming into the track. Temperatures taken. Everybody wearing masks and social distancing. And none of this would have been possible had it not been for uh, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper affirming the team's rights to go back to the shops and work on the race cars to get them ready to race two races here at Darlington and then two races next week at Charlotte. So. Uh, and a big, boy, a big shout out to our Fox camera people, technicians, replay people, graphics people who are located in three different places. The racetrack, Fox Network Center Charlotte, and Fox Network Center Los Angeles, where all the replays and the graphics and features are coming to you from. To put all this together as if we were all at the track, and Donnie Russell among our cameramen, Nelson Hastings, Michael Drainus, everybody up on the roof getting the pictures, getting the shots, and bringing them home to you. Our goal is to get back to the track as soon as possible, and we are working with Fox Corporate and with NASCAR to make that happen just as quickly as we can do so safely. Regan. Mike, you see the one car of Kurt Busch on the right side of your screen. That race car is very good after 10 laps. He needs it to fire off better. If they can do that, he thinks he's got a car that can run with the leaders up front there. The four car, Kevin Harvick. 
our leader right now. That race car progressively gets looser. You see him on the right side of the screen as he runs. He wants a small adjustment to keep that right rear tire from sliding like it's on ice as he runs longer. We can see again Kevin Harvick, that number one pit stall, that pit crew does the job, gets him out front. There's not going to be any saving tires now with 38 laps to go. It's going to be all out. Oh, it's on from here. 38 laps to go in Darlington. Wow. Seven races coming up in just 11 days. NASCAR is back. Wednesday night, we're here at Darlington with the Cup Cars. May 19th with the Xfinity Series. May 20th with the Cup Cars for 500K. And then Sunday, May 24th, the Coca-Cola 600. One day later, Xfinity races at Charlotte. One day after that, the trucks are on Charlotte Motor Speedway. And then that Wednesday night, 500 kilometers for the Cup Cars once again on the Oval at Charlotte. <laughs> we don't have anything to do the next couple of weeks, but boy, are we glad to be back. Boy, Mike, that is gonna be uh, a lot of racing in a short period of time, hitting the track running as we get back to racing here. And uh, I mean, today's just been a spectacular event. Just, just seeing cars out on track, seeing the action, hearing the cars, uh, it, it's been wonderful to see. And I'm looking forward to a lot more of it coming up. So Jeff, as a driver, you've been off for 10 weeks. You're racing here in the humidity at Darlington. You're gonna run here again on Wednesday night. Then you've got the longest race of the year at Charlotte and then 500K more. What's your biggest concern? Yeah, as a driver, it's just gonna be about hydration, staying in shape, recovery. These races take a lot out of you. It's really hot and it drains all the energy out of you, especially in this high humidity here at Darlington. This first race back, I think all the nerves not being in the car week in and week out makes you use a little more energy. So I think these guys are all on a plan to get back each uh, race as we go through this uh, schedule and to be fresh and ready to go. But now, Larry Mack, what about the pit crews? They're getting plenty of reps today, but they've got four races over, what, eight days? Well, and, and a lot of them will be pulling double duty and triple duty because they may do some pit work in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. Plus, they'll probably be continue to work out. But look at the man that's in fifth place, Kyle Busch. And by the way, while we're talking about this schedule, Kyle Busch is going to run every single one of them. In fact, those four races in Charlotte, four consecutive days, 1,412 laps of racing for Kyle Busch. Wow. Uh, and you mean the guy that's worked his way all the way up into fifth in this that? race with 35 laps to go? Don't count Kyle Busch out of anything. Fox NASCAR would love to see your race day experience. Upload videos of how you're watching today's race. Use the hashtag 100K cams. Then watch FS1 on May 24th. See if your footage made it on to our special 100,000 cameras, the return of NASCAR. That's Artie Kepner, our director, John Howard, our technical director. They are at Darlington, taking all the inputs from the live cameras and the robo cams that are on the scene and Regan Smith's pit cam, sending it here to Charlotte, on to Los Angeles and back. Wow, it takes a village. And uh, thanks to all of you for your help as they approach the Geico restart zone. And we're ready to get at it. It'll be 34 laps to go. Watch the intensity start to ramp up here on this restart, Mike. Off for cover. No foot, half off, out of line, still inside. Still there. Here's pushes on you, still inside, even. Pushes on you again. Back off you. Keep her wand up. You'll get him off a of four if you get a good hole shot here. Keep digging there. There you go. Get a good hole shot off the corner. Still at your bumper cover inside. Still way down low inside. To get you a good run. Still there. Coming back a little bit. Still there. It's going to be no Still give and there. take here for this lead as Alex Bowman battles hard with Kevin Harvick to try to get the lead. Yeah, if you can get it, you've got to get it now. Absolutely. Look at Kevin Harvick fighting back on that outside. No way he wants to give up that clean air. No, this could be for the win right here. It's not over yet as they go side by side into turn three. Oh, Bowman gets loose. Car washed up, almost got away from him. And Harvick almost in the wall, scrapes the outside. What a battle. Ooh. 
Now what Kurt Busch is hoping and Chase Elliott and these guys further back, he's hoping they used up some of the good of those tires in that battle. Kurt to the inside for second. Trying to pounce, hoping Bowman used up his tires battling for the lead. Nothing there. Well, we know Kurt Busch is good after 10 laps, but we're only a couple laps into the after this restart. So he needs to fight for these positions because if he can stay within contact, at least uh, uh, of the leader, I, uh, Kevin Harvick, he has a shot at this win with 30 to go. Four car breakaway. Harvick's Ford, Bowman, Bush, Elliott in Chevrolets, and Eric Jones trying to hang on. It's the veterans against the young lines. Imagine that in the top four. Harvick, last time he led 100 laps in a race and failed to win was Chicagoland. Alex Bowman, the driver currently in second place, went to victory lane. Harvick's led 129 so far. Benedetto outside Austin Dillon that's 14th place. You can see just how difficult it is to make that pass if you're Austin Dillon he gets position on Matt Benedetto gets to the inside but that momentum carries you on that outside lane and Matt able to carry that all the way down the back straightaway maintain that position. Tyler Reddick. Brian Kyle Bush, this is for seventh. And just remember that the last time we raced was at Phoenix. And remember the race that Tyler Reddick was putting together. Didn't end up with great results. But I'm telling you, that momentum has continued for him as we come here to Darlington. Great effort. He makes a pass on Kyle, uh, Kyle Bush for that position. Blaney and Boyer for 17th. Newman behind them. Still 27 oh, no. lap cars. What's this? As soon as we talked about Kyle Busch, I got to believe that's probably a loose wheel. And the team's not sure just what the problem is. We'll see if they turn two or four. He picked up four spots on the last pit stop. They're certainly not sure which wheel it is, if it is a loose wheel, because they're changing all four. Oh, battle between Eric Jones and Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott might have got a little bit of the wall off of turn four there. And that's going to cost Kyle Busch a lap. And Jeff, if you pit for a vibration, you almost have to do four tires because if you just roll the dice and do two, you may not get the right one. Yeah, that's correct, Larry. Boy, Eric Jones knows his way to victory lane at Darlington. And Jones is saying on the radio he's afraid he may have a loose wheel. Or again, the same type of problem perhaps that Truex had earlier. And <laughs> Blaney about had a problem right there as yeah. he and Clint Boyer are battling. He got really loose off of turn four. Not sure if he made contact with the wall. But Mike, it's the same thing. That money stop, that last stop, you push and try. There's a little more pressure on these pit crews. And it's been a hot, grueling day for them as their first race back. That's when you can maybe rush it, make a slight mistake. Whoa. <laughs> Newman and Joey Logano going at it here for 17th. Oh, Larry, 24 laps to go. It's well, that time. It's, it's time for me to lay it out there. I went back and studied the last 10 Darlington Cup races, and because they were 500-mile races, I had to do a little bit of math and do percentages. And what I see is in today's race, a 400-miler, the last caution probably will come somewhere around 20 to 25 laps to go if the trends hold true, so we are right there. All right. Oh, and we've had three overtime finishes in those 10, too. Tenth place, Kozlowski and Kenseth. One thing I hadn't counted on, we still have two rookies in the top 10, Tyler Reddick and John Hunter Nemechek, running seventh and eighth. A couple of spots in front of this battle. Nemechek started 34th today by the blind draw. 
That is just a phenomenal effort. Applaud he and this team for being prepared to come into this event. John Hunter Nemechek's another one of those guys stays in great shape. So physically, he looks like he's peaking and getting to his best here at the closing laps of this race. You come out of Darlington with a top 10, your first time here in a cup car, you have done a man's day's work. <laughs> that is for sure. And, and especially if you've got the right side still on the car. Cole Custer who had a very strong stage one and continues to run on the lead lap in 19th or is it 20th depending on whether he or Ty Dillon is ahead. Right behind him see Bubba Wallace Ryan Priest battling side by side 21st and 22nd. Not sure, you know, Ryan Priest is, he was earlier, he's very happy with this car. He was driving forward inside the top 15, but it's fallen back since then. Things are heating up, up at the front. That number one is Kurt Busch in third place, 2.3 seconds off the lead. Reed Sorensen's gonna lap down again. The nine, of course, Chase Elliott, 2.8 seconds off the top spot their second place Alex Bowman on the outside of a lap car and leader Kevin Harvick as we're inside 20 to go. Yeah Kevin's in a great position here that battle that he had with with Alex Bowman I mean it just proved a lot to me about Kevin Harvick and his abilities as well as that race car by maintaining that clean air he's been able to pull away a little bit but lap traffic could be a determinator in uh, you know a big factor in how this race ends. Harvick and Bowman like the high line. Kurt Busch has kept his Chevrolet either on the bottom of the racetrack or in the middle groove. Is one approach or the other more conducive to good tire wear? Well, I think at this stage, this rubber laid down all across this racetrack, Mike. So it's probably, typically you would say that that inside lane would eat the left side tires up a little bit more, but it actually seems like it's holding on pretty good for a lot of these cars. But you see Harvick, he, he's running up high and just getting that momentum, getting that nice runoff. But, but look how close to the wall he's running in the middle of turns three and four. I mean, every time he enters turns three, turn, uh, turn three, he's just playing with that brake and throttle and steering wheel, just trying to float it up there and not touch the wall. Not easy to do as you get to the end of this race, the 293 laps. Martin Truex's day has kind of gone the other way as he is back there at seventh trying to hold off Tyler Reddick. Here's the telemetry lower left of your screen on Harvick. You can see he, he floats the car into turn three, he leads it with the nose, and then he starts to pick up the throttle, just hoping that it turns right as he gets to the wall. Hoping? <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Wow. <laughs> That's a leap of faith. But you can see through turns one and two, doesn't come all the way out of the throttle, carries a lot of speed to the center. His car looks uh, very strong through turns one and two. Right here, he's having to use that throttle a little bit. You can see the car wagging just a, a bit as he comes off of turn four. And that's been part of Kevin Harvick's strength on the mile and a half that predominate this circuit. Rarely on the bigger tracks do you see Harvick all the way out of the throttle and by carrying really good mid corner speed helps his lap times every lap. I've seen a lot of drivers study his his uh, telemetry and how he uses the throttle and how he steers the car trying to mimic it because of the success that Kevin Harvick has had. They're going to be looking at it this week also getting ready for Wednesday. Teammates for fifth place Denny Hamlin. Coming back toward the front on Eric Jones. We're hearing that possibly Eric Jones with a vibration also. Yeah, that, that's just, it's very typical, Mike, that, that, that the pressure on the pit crew members trying to make the fastest stop and then you go run some of the fastest laps because now 
the intensity ramps up and everybody's pushing to the limit. And a lot of times that combination can cause these wheels to come loose. Well, we've waited 10 weeks for the return of NASCAR, and now we're down to the final 10 laps. Past champion Kevin Harvick and Kurt Busch with Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, all looking, trying to close up for that top spot. But Harvick, once he beat Alex Bowman on the restart, we said at the time, hey, this could be the race right here. And it looks like it may have been. And Alex Bowman could have maybe pushed the issue a little bit more. There was one moment, one quick moment going into turn one where he may have been clear of Kevin Harvick, but he chose not to, to take that. Probably a wise choice because it might not have worked out. It right. might have been too risky, but that was the only opportunity that I really saw him take or be able to take. But that was a great battle. Unfortunately for Alex Bowman, Kevin Harvick was able to uh, continue and keep that lead. Starter with both hands outstretched, 10 to go. Harvick the leader in a Mustang. Bowman, the first Camaro in second. And Denny Hamlin, the first Camry, in fifth. Wednesday night, they'll be right back here to do it again. I'm not sure that's ever happened that NASCAR, not since they gave points for the Daytona qualifying races, I don't think, has NASCAR been to the same track twice in one week with point races. Martin Truex up and down day started the race loose fought his way up toward the lead and now goes past Jones into sixth place fought off what he felt could have been a loose wheel turned out to be just a vibration looking for his first top 10 finish of the season is Martin Truex. Hard to believe when you say that, Mike, but it is true. It, you know, it's making me think back of the four races that we've run this year. They have not been good races for Martin Truex Jr. So a top 10 is going to be something that uh, is going to be very welcomed by that race team. And I think they have a car. Now that they know uh, what this track is going to be like, they have a car that can win on Wednesday. Toyota's six, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Hamlin, Truex, and Jones. And behind them, the rookies, Tyler Reddick and John Hunter Nemechek. Both going to come out of this with a top 10 finish. Great run. And behind them, <laughs> from the youngest to the oldest driver in the field, Matt Kenseth. Looks like he's going to come out of here with a top 10 in his first cup race in over a year. That's amazing. Oh, we get some debris. Uh, that's more vinyl. And let's hope that doesn't end up on the front end of one of these cars. Seven to go. That won't be an issue. Come on, over the fence, over <laughs> the fence, over the fence. Uh. I got to believe. Oh, no, it's uh, Boyer. Boyer. Uh, that's all right. The grill's still up. Um, I, I really, I, it's going to change the aero. Definitely going to change the aerodynamics and handling of that race car. That's yeah, on the splitter, but it. Larry, doesn't it look like it's below the opening for uh, cooling air? It, it definitely looks like it's below it, but we have seen when debris gets on that splitter. That splitter, that front splitter is the most sensitive part about that race car. We've Whoa. seen, and it, it made it real sensitive yeah. right there, along with Ryan Newman in that six car, but it definitely can change the handling, Mike. Yeah, the way that air wraps around over the top and under that splitter is critical. That's why the heights are so important of whether they're hitting or not hitting that splitter. And you can already see it playing an effect on Clint Boyer. Here's that trash. A little bit of uh, adhesive vinyl signage. Benedetto avoids it and bam, center punches the <laughs> nose on Clint Boyer. <laughs> Poor Clint. <laughs> but I, I got to believe, Mike, these drivers are starting to feel the fatigue. Being the first race back, it's been hot. It's been a tough race. Track conditions. Really, this track makes you grip that steering wheel a little bit tighter because you run so close to the wall, you slide the car around. I got to believe these drivers are really starting to feel that as we close into the finish. Four laps to go. During the off weeks, everybody had to be a little bit creative trying to put on uh, their best face to get to Darlington in Kevin Harvick's case. Um, yeah, that's a leaf blower <laughs> blowing away the cuttings after Kevin got a haircut from his wife, Delena. 
Got to have good arrow for victory lane, right? I mean, I've heard of wind tunnels, Mike. But <laughs> <laughs> Bring your own. A lot of creative things went on here over the past 10 weeks. Well, Two to go. It, it's worked for Kevin Harvick. He has been strong, dialed in, just has performed flawlessly today. Well, also, this will be a big day for Hendrick Motorsports. Two drivers crashing out. But the last time Rick Hendrick had two cars finish in the top five at Darlington was 2014. Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, won that day. Kevin Harvick's going to show you the white flag with one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Timmy Hill waving him to the inside. Back straight away, final time. Kevin Harvick is about to become the 14th driver in NASCAR Cup history to reach 50 career victories, breaking a tie with Tony Stewart for 14th. Harvick wins NASCAR's return to action at Darlington. Thank you guys, awesome job. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The 44-year-old from Bakersfield scored his last win at Texas last November, six races ago. He's the fourth driver to win in the five races of 2020 so far. And Stuart Haas becomes the fourth different team organization to win in 2020. Well, I think this is a testament to all these teams, but especially Stuart Haas and Kevin Harvick, Rodney Childers. I mean, the amount of effort to be prepared to come in here and be that put together, pit stops, a race car, do all that you had to do to win this first race back uh, took, took a lot of effort. Fantastic job by them. Our aerial coverage of Harvick's victory provided by Goodyear. From race day to even better days ahead, Goodyear. The official tire of NASCAR. <laughs> Time to have some donuts. Fans are not. You got to do a donut. You got to celebrate a victory. That feels got to feel great. Harvick led 159. A little more than half the laps today. And now heads for the start finish line. Where he'll be greeted by Regan Smith. It's his second Darlington win in 24 starts here. And he becomes the 27th driver to own multiple Darlington victories. And he keeps a great string intact. He is the only driver to finish in the top 10 in every race of this young season. And he's burned down the house for you folks <laughs> watching at home. Glad to have you with us on Fox as NASCAR returns to action. And don't forget, we're right back here on Wednesday night. Dr. Josh Hughes is the everyday hero above Kevin Harvick's window. Every driver had such uh, a medical person above the window on that car. Dr. Hughes, an emergency medical physician for Mid-Atlantic EMA in the emergency department at Novant Health Presbyterian. Triaging patients, stabilizing, diagnosing, treating illnesses and injuries. Regan. Kevin Harvick emerges from his race car, taking the booties off. Helmet still on. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all figuring this out as we go, Kevin. What an incredible performance by you and your team today. You have won some of the biggest races in this sport. A champion, I have to imagine that this race today ranks right up there at the top of that list. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody from NASCAR and all the teams for um, letting us do what we do. This is a you know, I didn't think it was going to be that much different, and then we won the race, and it's dead silent out here. So we miss the fans. Um, just got to thank everybody from 
Bush Light, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Mobile One, uh, Jimmy John's, everybody from Ford who, uh, who helps, helps on this car. It's just, um, it's a pretty, pretty big honor to, uh, to win 50 races in this deal. And, um, you know, just got to thank all my team guys and, and everybody for, for what they're doing. Um, this Dr. Josh Hughes is, is one of my really good friends. I uh, spend a lot of time with him, have seen how this whole pandemic has affected uh, our frontline workers in person um, on, a, on a weekly basis. So uh, thank you, Josh. We're thinking about you. Got to say hi to Delaney and my kids at home. Um, guess we'll bring home the trophy. Certainly think about everybody that's affected by the pandemic. This is your 50th win yeah. in your career. I mean, does that seem real right now? It doesn't seem real. And, you know, I think as, as you look at Darlington, you know, I think as you look at the things that happened this weekend, I really thought that it would it would definitely uh, play into our hand just because our guys are so good at, at hitting the car uh, off the truck for the most part. We put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of studying, a lot of meetings, and just got to thank everybody at the shop who's built all these cars. And just, man, I'm excited. You know, it's, it's, it is weird um, just because there's, there's nobody up there. And, and you can go to bushbeer.com and, and maybe have your face on the car next week up here on the hood. So everybody from Fields and Haas, and I'm speechless. Kevin Harvick, speechless after winning at Darlington, Mike. 50 victories, ties, Hall of Famers, Junior Johnson and Ned Jarrett who in 1965 won the Southern 500 at Darlington by a NASCAR record 14 laps. We'll be back with more from NASCAR's first super speedway in Darlington. Kevin Harvick has won the Real Heroes 400. <laughs>